Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Bradenton City Council meeting, 8.30 a.m., Wednesday, August 25th. At this time, if we can please stand, we'll ask the invocation by Vice Mayor Mary Ann Barnaby. Please join me in our meditation. Creator and sustainer of all that is or will be, faithful and compassionate, full of mercy and love, thank you for your example of strength and mercy. As we gather here today as members of our city leadership, we pray that we are ever mindful of opportunities to render service to our fellow citizens and to our community at large. Let us keep in mind the enduring values of life, exerting our efforts on things which future generations can build upon. Help us to strive to make our world a better and more caring place. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Please join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. And just to uh, make an announcement that uh, Mr. Harold Byrd, Councilman Byrd, is in the audience as well as Mr. Gallo. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, moving forward, Mrs. Melton, any proclamations or presentations? No, sir. All right, so we'll move, move right into citizen comment. First person is Jacob Frida, I believe. Ferda, okay. All right, and you'll have three minutes, and this is on non agenda items. Thank you. I want to first start off and say I'm very disappointed in the leadership that sits before me today. Uh, I live off of 2nd Avenue East, where the new apartments from NDC have been constructed and the extension of Riverwalk. Um, Mr. Mayor, we have met you on site. There have been other people that have come and gone. No one has done anything about the issue or has done very minimal to the issue and has not done anything to alleviate the concerns I've brought to you guys. There are many code infractions. No one has done anything. Certificate of occupancy has been issued, and yet no one here can give me an answer. Everyone points the finger and says, not my job, or I cannot do anything to. It only adds to our belief and the narrative that NDC can do whatever they want. I'm also concerned with the park construction that's going on. Um, in the area for the extension of the Riverwalk. There has been no notification to the owners or the residents that live there that this construction was going on, that we're gonna be road closures. Not only that, I believe there's been mismanagement in the construction processes as it's been over three weeks why the roads have been closed. And I get generic construction answers. As a project manager in construction, in the last five years I've worked underground utilities, done heavy civil, road, bridges, you name it, I've done it. High rises, I've done those as well. Yet, somehow, NDC is able to build in a manner that's not conducive to the residents that live there and get away with, in my eyes, murder. There's been no cleanup from construction activities along the road as well. And according to the meeting that you came on site, it was your job to hold people accountable. Yet, I have not seen any of this. An email dated back in April, Mr. Mayor and I have CC'd many people within the, that sit here. Um, do we even have our public works department guy here? No? Yes, he's uh, here. He's here? Yeah. Okay. You know, I've talked to you about it. You've been CC'd on many of these emails. No responses have been given to us at all. Ms. Walker, myself, others have inquired. We will get a phone call, maybe. Maybe an inspector will come by to give us a generic answer, but no real answers or responses. Per our city code, you are not to exceed 0.2 foot candles, is that correct? From a residence line. That's straight from your guys' That's city straight. code. You're talking about lighting? Lighting. I have taken multiple readings from people's property lines along 12th and 2nd, and we are at, remember, 0.2 is the limit. 
1.5 at the right of way or property line of the uh, lighting issue. We are at twos and threes, people. At night, I am constantly bombarded by lighting issues and can barely get a good night's sleep. I'm a working professional, I'm a project manager, works construction, my wife is a director at one of the local schools. We are professionals and yet we are treated like second class citizens. And again, we have no answers and there's been no fixtures. In fact, NDC and your guys' answers were to turn the lights off until a certificate of occupancy was issued and then they turned the lights back on. Does anyone have answers for me today? This public comment, so finished and then we'll respond. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll even, to, if you guys like to hear more about the mismanagement of the road closure, there's been no practical means and methods taken care of and no consideration for our, the residents that live there. My poor son who started school, and we are in the middle of rainy season, people, has to walk an extra 20 minutes in the rain because they refuse to allow access to that road when there's been no construction in the last three weeks. And there are simple and cheap, effective ways to alleviate those issues. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, it's been three minutes. Okay, all right, thank you, and we'll, we'll respond to you, so appreciate your time. I'll, I'll give you Mr. Sanders? That's my award, and you've spoke to me numerous times, and uh, I apologize that the, the project has taken too long. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, we've had torrential rains, and I know you don't want to hear that. But, uh, oh, I understand that there's torrential rains. I understand that there's delays in projects. I understand there's a change order involved. I do these multiple times. I've built many, many conflict boxes. But why can't we simply backfill the trench against a trench box, lower your well points, and put a road plate? Every municipality along the west coast of Florida, and I know this for a fact because I do this. I do this for the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Pasco County, city of Oldsmar, city of St. Pete, city of Tampa, Sarasota. We recently completed a project down there off Ringling Bridge. I agree that could be done, but that would be, you know, a cost, and because that's a quite a huge Fractional oh, it's cost. it's probably 20 feet wide. And no, sir. I took a measurement of it yesterday. It was eight foot wide, and they could have backfilled against their trenches or their trench boxes to keep their construction the alive. trench and box is probably eight foot wide, isn't it? Yes, it is eight foot wide. So yeah, but there's on both sides of it. And of long the, lengthwise, the, yes. But okay. they could have easily backfilled against their trench box to protect their work. Yeah, I went there and I took pictures. And, but the, 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 the option you have, and I know you don't like it, but the option you have is to go out the other way. And I know that that's... I don't mind having to drive the other way. It's my son that has to walk in the rain. Well, but it's the same distance the other way. No, sir, it's not. It's not? No, sir. I, I don't he has a straight that. shot from 2nd Ave over. Now he has to go all the way up and around and you back. Well, that's, to me, that's the same. But... Uh, uh, same distance? Same distance. Yeah. No, sir. It's not? No. We can Google Maps it right now if you'd like. Okay. No. Uh, but and anyway, there's been no notification to the Anyway, the, the, the resolve to this is to get it done. And so I was out there yesterday, and I spoke to the construction manager, and he hopes by this weekend, no later than the middle of next week, that it will be completed. I, I'm, I, and so <clears throat> I know that might not be satisfactory to you, but that's the best we can do. No, that's not the best that we can do. I have presented the means and methods of how everyone else does it in the state and how they care about their citizens that live in the area and decide to m minimize the impacts that we have to live through. Not only that, we have not even a quiet pump out there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm, uh, I, I'm... We don't even follow our own city codes. Yeah, well, the lighting thing, I don't know. I, I, I assume the lighting was, um, uh, I know our public works went out and did a, a test, I assumed. Yeah, with the lights off. Oh, was it lights off? Lights were okay, off. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, that's not true. That is so, not true. Thank you, though. Know. I think that what, what we'll do is, is, Jacob, you and I have talked a lot. It hasn't been any communication recently. I've so, talked to you once. And right, but I'm saying email. emailed. When I say talk, I yeah. uh, email, and, and I've talked with other people in that neighborhood. And our public works and planning director, I know, have been out there late at night testing the lights and doing the different things. Um, obviously, that's a huge change when you go from a forest kind of uh, trees and that to lighting and I've been out there at midnight I've been out there at two o'clock in the morning when I'm coming in give me a call and, and doing it. it well I'm not going to do that at midnight or two o'clock in the morning we're driving by and you know we'll check again with the lighting to see that and I know we have responded numerous times I have we've no, got good people I've that got sit email. up here everybody does care you know we do care 
And I, like I said, I know Jim would call me and say I was out there at 1030. You know, being out there at 730 when the lights still light out. And so, again, I will I'll, we'll follow up on some of this again. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't think I've got an email from you in a while. I haven't seen one. Because I have no responses. Oh, no, there was always response. The last response I have from you guys is in May. That's, the, uh, that's probably the last time I got an email from you. No, I, But, I, again, we turn it over to our staff, and we'll move forward with that. But I'd we, like to be present for the, yeah. when we do the testing again. So we'll, we'll check on that. I'll get with Jim and, and the Public Works and our planning department because, again, nobody's getting special privilege. You say that, but it's not happening. They're held accountable just like anyone else, and that would be very important. We have a new administrator. He's setting in some new policies. We're working through some of those to make sure that we do have the evidence to f that we've been doing things. Um, so, again, it is going to happen, and it's going to be right. And if it's right when we check it, then it's I'd just like to a be different present thing. for that so testing. Yes, that, that would be possible. So um, we can work that out. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Oh, Mrs. Bonnier. Yeah. Um, let me just say it tends to be my policy that if I receive an email from someone that is not in my ward, mm -hmm. I wait to see if the council person for that ward is going to respond and deal with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, most certainly, and I'm not, this is more directed because I have talked to the mayor about this issue. Bill Sanders, I've talked to this issue. I've public works mainly. Um, if it's not in your ward, I mean, unless you're part of the building department or codes enforcement, I don't no. expect you to respond. Well, but, but and let, let me be clear, because we are elected citywide, mm -hmm. I just feel it's a professional courtesy to allow the individual that is responsible Most for certainly. that area because they're the closest geometric again i don't expect you. you to respond or so, you know ward one I, to respond when I'm, it's a and i don't know others i've never had this discussion with them but others may feel the same way too mm -hmm. um, I, look, if you know, i and, and if i know the person personally i still refer them mm -hmm. to their council member well certainly so. thank you mr wall yeah thanks um I, just, I i'm not i i'm not aware of, of, of your situation but i could tell you that what you've done today there'll probably be some pretty quick action on it. So uh, this is a, you know, might not be the best way of dealing with it, but it's a certainly a good way of dealing with it. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be resolution. I did plan on bringing this up under council comments that uh, I would like an update on where we are with the park. I mean, this is a, this is a major, um, uh, major investment on our part, years, literally years in the making. I mean, probably six years now um, since the, whole transaction took place. I, I'd like to, uh, I don't know if it needs to be a special meeting, a workshop or something, but I'd, I'd like a complete update on, on where we are, maybe a report on, I, I don't know what a completion date is, a status report. Also, um, uh, the consultant, uh, I'd like to, uh, I, I, from what I understand, this has only been working on what, one or two phases now, like six years in. I'd like to get this completed. I'd like to get this fast track to, uh, go all the way down to the connection point. I mean, I, I, I mean, I spent a half a dozen years on something. I, I start losing my patience. So, you know, so I, I think I think it's time. I mean, we got a whole new transition here. I, I think that this is, a, this is a big project and it's 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 worthy of a special meeting. Well, I, and I agree with you, Mr. Roth, <coughs> that we need a, a maybe a more of a public update. I know there's been things sent out from public works and the different things, but having a public more of a you know, meeting type thing can happen. But I do believe that um, public works, planning, have been very involved in it. I know Mr. Sanders and I have been, but I haven't got anything lately, Mr. Sanders, in emails or anything. I know you and I are copied on a lot and we respond. I would check with you. If you responded something, you would check with me. And you know, there's been a time that sometimes you even felt that maybe I responded trying to something, but I didn't. I mean, I always try to do it and, and again, Nobody's getting special privilege, and everybody up here cares. So to imply that is incorrect. If there's something happening that is outside of the means, it's opinion. It's, you know, there's the difference in fact and opinion, and sometimes the lighting may bleed more. There's other issues that can happen in that neighborhood. Code enforcement is, is uh, Mr. Sanders has brought up, and even to, we're hiring a new code enforcement person to help with a lot of code enforcement. So if we're doing something wrong, we're held just as accountable as the citizens. Mr. So Mayor, I'm not happen. a man of opinion, I'm a matter of science and fact, with my right. degree and my well, experience should you, uh, yeah. Well, we appreciate it, and, and uh, we will reach out, as the council people have said, even more, but um, I, have, I came to a meeting with one person and got 10 people, and I've done, from what we talked that day, we have continued to move forward 
and some of the things in, you say fact, but you know, our public works director is not gonna go out there at 1030 at night and say the lights are bleeding over if there are, are or aren't. So he's gonna say the truth. He has no reason to not get it done right. So we will meet with you and we will take care of it and, and move forward uh, at the means of what our codes are. So I appreciate it. And uh, you know, someone will be in touch with you soon. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate you coming and I think you'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm missing work today just so I can. I, I understand. And, and that sometimes that's what has to happen for us to, to uh, make things happen. So I appreciate you coming. Thank you, sir. All right, next on the uh, citizens comments, Jean Gallo. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jean Gallo, resident of Ward 1, City of Bradenton. Try to keep my address all out of the public so people don't throw stones at me, but <laughs> if I'm required to, I'll give it to you. No, that's fine. Thank you, Mr. Gallo. Um, I think it was a month ago that I came before uh, the council to talk about the retirees that retired before 2012 that worked for the city of Bradenton. And I, I left with the assumption, which I know what assumptions are, uh, that the that Mr. Mr. Perry and the council would get together and discuss the increase. I got a phone call this week, actually two phone calls from uh, two retired police officers uh, and wanted to know if I had an update and I told them no, but I, I will get an update. Uh, made a phone call yesterday to the police department to find out if there had been an update and was told that HR told them that uh, Mr. Perry had told HR to go ahead and submit the 8% increase to the retirees, uh, get the letters out. And so I decided I think that I should come this morning again and, and, and fight for these people. I did go back into some of the uh, meetings we had at, at a council, or at a workshop meeting in 2018 I spoke against this when I was on city council, so it's not something that that I just have got involved in since I retired. And and I and I want to emphasize what drives me to this position is you got a you got a, a young man, 25 years old, comes to work for the city, and that's the best time of his life, and he gives you 30 years of his life, both physically and psychologically and then he retires with what he's got left. And here's the thing that, that, that kicks me. Um, all retirees from, from 2012, that retired before 2012, do not get a stipend from the city of Bradenton. Starting in 2012, the city gave and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Perry, was it $10 a year, I, I believe? I have to check on that, Mr. Mayor. Oh, okay. Uh, now you can get up to like $300 a stipend to go towards your health insurance. People that retired before 2012, they're not eligible for that. They don't get that opportunity. And if you look, I got a number here, if I can find it, I'm, about, I'm not very, organized, I guess, as I should be. Um, the monthly care charge on all retirees <coughs> for 2021 and 2022. The employee... Mr. Gall, I think that um We've got your point, and I would like to ask some of the information that, and again, this has been something that uh, Mrs. Taylor, Mr. Perry, and I have met with a couple times over the last couple weeks and trying to come up with some of the information. So what I'd like to do, if it's all right with you, is just have Mr. Perry. We know what the question is. I think we know that, if, and with the time up, if I ask Mr. Perry and maybe Mrs. Taylor if there's any response on some of the information and maybe some of the history that would help us. 
because we did we have met with this and we are working on it um, to find out the history and and the cost obviously to the employee in the city okay man make just one statement sure. yes sir uh, that I would like to emphasize that when you say and some of these people like there one gentleman that worked 30 years his retirement is only seventeen hundred dollars a month and he's going to be paying over nine hundred dollars a month remember when you increase the insurance eight percent on these families you're in reality reducing their income and I'm sorry but now's not the time to do things like that important that the city did not have a big cost factor that's what the what the committee meets and talks about with COVID it kept it down so and they're not giving an increase to the regular employees why do it to the retirees that was actually predates the, um, most of us up here it was done in 2012 I understand that some Mr. of that Mayor. nothing's changed since 2012 but so not, when we talk about the insurance committee meeting this year nothing was brought then I said nothing had been brought up right so that was the history is important and then the council will have to decide how well to forward on let me tell you real quick how it was how it was always handled when uh, when I argued about it in 2018 at a workshop Mr. Callahan asked the council people to give input to, the, to him what he thinks or what they think about whether it should be charged or not. I was, I was totally against it and I'm still against it. But this year, at least, I mean, there's no big cost factor to the city like there has been in the past and we're not, we're not increasing the regular employees. Why take it out on the retirees? They got enough that they gave us physically and mentally. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Perry, Ms. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, appreciate your leadership on, on bringing this to the administration's uh, attention and, and priority list. We have obviously drilled down on it. Yourself and I have had several meetings. Ms. Taylor and I have had several meetings, and we'll go over into a little bit about the history of what this is about, what we found out, the cost factors that are associated with it, and some of the, um, the, uh, the the, the problems that are associated with the, 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 the plight of the folks that are in this situation because it, it is a, a situation of two different groups of, of employees. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Taylor to tell you a little bit. And, and just before I do that, I actually have the notes right here that I went and got from that 2000. It was a 17 meeting that Mr. Gallo just referred to. The very notes from that meeting from Mr. Callahan. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Council. Um, thank you, Mr. Perry. Um, in re reviewing notes and reviewing um, minutes and some historical data, we found that um, originally the city was subsidizing the retiree health insurance, which was a liability to the city. In 2010, uh, the city made changes to insurance uh, uh, policies increasing contributions from 0% to 8% and matching rates of assumed costs thereafter. Um, to limit negative financial impact upon the city, in 2012, City Council deemed it was uh, that a retiree should pay what it cost the city to administer the plan um, toward the goal of an 8% annual increase um, which had been applied to retiree um, policies. I again, this was approved in 2010. Um, upon review, this affects those that retired prior to 2012, and um, there are around 81 retirees this affects overall. Okay. Is the cost associated with the city, Ms. Taylor, please? I'm sorry, sir. Is the cost associated with it? Thank you. Um, right now, the city pays $10,733 per employee per month. The um, employee pays a, a contribution of that. Um, those that retired after 2012, of course, they pay the equivalent amount minus any stipends. Be 
the associated cost would be uh, city cost or? Yes. 10733 times 81. Yeah, is that it? Well, the full cost of the plant, are we going by individual plants or are we going by overall? Because if it's if. You could just give the council a general indication of the type of fiscal impact this would have. Understood. Okay, so for uh, a single plan, it costs the city $539.99 for that plan. Um, a month. Per month. month, yes. Per employee. Sir? Per, per times 81. Yes. Um, that, that's for a single plan, um, and the gross monthly premium to the retiree would be $181. That's those that are retired prior to 2012. Um, currently, those that retired after, for the very same plan, the city pays the same amount, and the retiree contribute $489 of that. So if we look at those that retired prior to at $181, that's what the city was trying to close that, uh, uh, close the gap as to the dollar amounts paid by city retirees and. Um, so, so what you're looking at, let me summarize the numbers. Mm -hmm. 181 versus 468, basically. That's the size of the difference. The 8% is an attempt to close the gap. On the microphone, so. I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor. Thank you. Yep. The 8% was an attempt to close that gap because it's a sizable gap. If you take that difference, basically, and multiply it times 81, that's kind of the unliquidated liability of the city. There has been you know, some catch up done and the like, but it has a fairly significant cost to the city to pick this program up. If you'd like a specific number, if you give us a week, we can probably drill down on that and get competent help that can get us that number. Yeah, Mr. Gallo, uh, just because we can't hear all over, but but why don't, uh, and again, I, obviously this has been being worked on and going through things, so why don't we, if we can, and <clears throat> to have a very educated number mm -hmm. in the in uh, our next council meeting, and we'll have a report on it, so we can have something that actually says it's this much, it's that much, and, and I think some of the things that, that I found um, with the 81 is Obviously, we can't get into individual specifics because of its, its employees and, and past retirees and that. But I think if we show some numbers, I think that when you really look at it, it'll be very easy to understand. And then the council has to make that decision. Are they willing? And a lot of it was done through OPEB and different things, I believe, mm -hmm. to make sure that we are meeting rules and laws. And, and obviously, all of us would love to give more, but it's got to be the dollars and cents of it to work through it. So. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Roth had it. Oh, okay, go ahead. Mr. Roth? Yeah, um, so I, 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 vaguely remember, um, I, I vaguely remember this, um, looking at these numbers and uh, realizing, too, at that point in time, we were um, crawling out of the recession and, uh, you know, cutting costs was basically all we did for about four or five years. Um, I would point out um, I, I, questions, too, is, uh, when we talk about retirees, I think we're talking about two different kinds of people. Because um, I, I know that I, I've been studying retirement for about the last five years because my wife and I are closing in on the magic number 65, um, which is when people are eligible for Medicare. So how many of these people are not 65? Um, you know, is that what we're talking about? And, then, uh, cause, and, and if they are, why are they not on Medicare? That's what I plan on doing. And then also, um, you know, as we're talking about this too, because, you know, if there's any citizens out there watching us right now, they're going to hear the word retirement. Just for, uh, you know, FYI, um, from, from, from the stuff that I'm seeing in AARP, about 75% of Americans do not have a retirement program. They have Social Security, and that's, that's their retirement program, which is it's going to be a pitiful state of affairs. So, um, uh, you know, we, we have that, and then are we... Are, are these people, should these people be on Medicare, uh, you know, which is the government subsidized health insurance program that I plan on going on? 
if I could just address that briefly, it's an excellent point that if you drill down more granularly on this, you will find that a lot of these individuals are eligible for, for Medicare. There could be other reasons why they could have dependents under the age of 26, which would be uncovered if they were to jump on Medicare and off the city's plan. There's a difference between the plan definition, i.e. benefits between the city's plan and the federal Medicare plan. There's the medical gap that is really covered by Medicare Part B that factors into it. But the reality is, is that we're offering a fairly wide panoply of options to these employees. And, and you know, if they want to stay on a better plan because it benefits them, their individual situation, then I got to pay more to drive a Cadillac than I do a Pinto. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it works, right? They, they haven't made those in a long time. <laughs> I know. Well, there's a good reason. But, but I mean, those are the, the economic decisions that, that come to play. And, and Mr. Gallo has a good point. I mean, don't, I'm not trying to minimize in any way, you know, the, the, the hard work these people have, have bought in and, and, and the plight of the cost impact on someone that's on a, re, a fixed income. It's a very legitimate point. These aren't wealthy people. They have a retirement, they might have Social Security, other assets, but, and, and, and so it's granular. We, but we need to cut that, uh, uh, hone that down a little bit, as Mayor Brown has pointed out. Your point's excellent, Councilor Roth. All right, uh, Mr. Sanders. Uh, I have three questions. One is, uh, after 2012, uh, what is the stipend that we offer other uh, employees, retirees? dollars 20-year employees, $300. $300 per month? Yes. And um, FIRE has, a, a, in their collective bargaining agreement, they've got uh, $15 um, uh, for members retired prior to 2012. Um, they've got $15 for every uh, uh, year of service. Okay. And some of it is and negotiated through the union stuff, too. Yes. Yeah, yeah I understand. Parts of I'm just trying to get a picture. So, so basically, a maximum of $450. It's not a flat rate of $300 or $450. Right. There's that maximum. You've got to meet certain uh, requirements and eligibility. So I understand, and I know there's a lot of <clears throat> differences between each employee that we can't get into. Um, the, the, but this is is close to it's about $900,000 a year if we were to 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 do this, if we just said backed it up and said about $900,000 per year, uh, forever. And <clears throat> um, I mean, these are things that somebody would actually have to tell us what it, the true cost would be. So that would be a, a number that I'd want to know before I made a decision. Um, and <clears throat> what do we do versus full coverage? I mean, when you become 65, like Mr. Ruff said, you can go to Medicare. And what, what do we do I mean, do we have an option that, that says that you can, we, we pay the supplement and, and then you go on Medicare? Uh, is, that, is that offered or is it suggested or how do we handle that? Yeah, um, well, uh, according to our, uh, um, according to OPEB, one of the agreements and the two changes the city made, one was retirees upon reaching age 65, they are required to go uh, and enroll in Medicare Part A and B. Okay, so they, 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 all these people are on Medicare, so this difference is, is basically a supplement in that, that they're paying for. That's pretty expensive, isn't it? It's isn't that quite expensive? I mean, um, uh, I, I don't, I mean, that sounds awful expensive to me. But, um, so is, is there opportunity or a bit, Availability to offer a stipend like we do the employees after retirees after 2012 is that an option versus absorbing all of it? Do you want me to respond? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, back in 2012, the then Talk city a council. More to the microphone. Sorry, back in uh, 2012, the the council back then um, approved those two changes which would be the 8% increase to those retiring prior to 2012, and then the requirement of uh, a Medicare AB, and also rewarding long-term employees, those that have been here 20 years, would be eligible to receive the stipend. So, um, but not those that retired prior to, again, that was a decision that was made back then. 
prior to 2012, nobody got anything. Right. Any stipend. Uh, on any any stipend. stipend. So I just figured you, I asked you the question earlier, uh, the $300, $300 a month for the stipend would be about 3,600 hours a year per employee times, it'd be less than the full 8%. Is that on the table for, for is that a part of the uh, union contract? That, that is not part of, uh, the only one that has negotiated the benefit is fire and uh, they've negotiated it, it's, it's, it's it, by that, retirement date. Sir. Yeah, yeah they've negotiated by retirement date. Um, they, they did that, and I don't know the exact year, it's in Article 29 of their contract, and, and I'm assuming they probably did it after it became an issue and they realized there was a you know, financial, significant financial um, effect and impact on them. And, uh, it, it basically charges the three percent to existing retirees. Is the way I think. I think, Mr. Sanders, and uh, the good questions by everybody. But I think some of the information that we can drill down a little bit more is get some numbers and, and true facts and do that. And that way, now that it's come up, it's been explained. You know, again, sometimes I mean, uh, the eight years, seven and a half years I was here, come up, and you know, I think we need to get that information get it to the council, see, and then make an informed decision because there is nobody that up here that wants to harm anybody in a way that's tried. But we also have to have the information and I think look at some of the, the numbers of the pre-12 amounts and, and then see. And then also, I think it's very important, and I know that's what Mr. Perry's bringing to us now, is that we drill it down so the information is understandable and then make an informed decision. Um, I think that some of the, when we talked about it, the three of us met, when you and I've met, Mr. Perry, it's sometimes there may be a better plan out there if somebody, as Mr. Sanders just said, if they can go on Medicare and pay $120, but they're paying us $220 and get a better coverage, why wouldn't they? So I think some of that may be on our HR department to help the retiree understand it because we know that the insurance is very confusing and you're afraid to lose something when actually in reality you could save money and get something better. It's just making sure you're there. Yes, sir. So I think that's, if that's all right, we'll, we'll move we forward and we'll definitely get the information out. And I think Mrs. Barnaby had. Yes, something. I just, while you're doing that, I would be interested. I know we have 81 retirees in this, in this situation. I would like to know the average increase for these retirees, but I would also like you to, and I don't, like I said, I don't need names, I don't need anything. If you can give me the lowest increase and if you can give me the highest increase. We have some of that information, Mr. Mayor, Council, and Barnaby already. We looked at that. Those are good kind of indicators mathematically to consider. And so we do have some of that information. I think what I'm hearing is we need to do a little bit uh, more detail work on our actuarial um, uh, impacts, as the term was proffered by, by Councilman Sanders, and I agree, we do. So let, if you could do that, and we, and we might have to, to utilize a little bit of outside help on it, and because and, you're talking about some, some kind of specialty type areas. Well, let, me, let me see the complexity of it. And I'm, I'm going to ask it, because this is so important, I'm going to ask Mr. Gallo, he wants to say one more may, statement. May we be? Yes, that, that, that's good. I think it will move forward, and this is very important. I mean, it, it is. Um, no matter what answer we come up with, it's very important. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Perry and Ms. Taylor. Mr. Gallo? Just wanted to add it to uh, Ms. Barnaby. Another important thing that you need to know is how many of these people are 65 years old and older because Medicare pays 80% of that bill and the city only has to pay 20% of the contracted price so a person that's on Medicare costs you a lot less than an employee who is 30 years old. So, and when it comes to actuaries, mm -hmm. I found out the hard way that actuaries will give you whatever number you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't put a lot of stock in them. You know, how many years was our fire and police pensions actuarially unfunded? It would, but and they well. come up and give you, well, what number do you want, Chief, so you can get it in your budget? Thank you, Mr. Gallon. Thanks for bringing this. Um, is there anyone else in the audience, citizen comment? Okay. All right, moving forward, we'll go to consent agenda. Mrs. Melton. 
We are requesting approval of the consent agenda items A through I. Is there a motion uh, or a question? Mr. Sanders? I'd like to uh, remove B. B? B, like in boy. Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, D, also. All right. Mr. Mayor, I was going to pull item G just for clarification. <laughs> just pull it off. Okay, so um, is there a motion to approve A, C, E, F, H, and I? Move to approve. All right. Second. Second. Okay, we're on. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, B, I, I was looking at the wrong agenda. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, I uh, take all that back. Okay, so, so right. we'll just pull. Is there a motion, amend it, Mr. Roth? Uh, to move to move amend. To re remove G. Move to amend the motion to... Uh, uh, approve the consent agenda uh, with minus, mi minus uh, item G. Okay. Ms. Coachman, second? Second. All right. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll start to vote in Ward 1. Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 4? Yes. 5? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Roth? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to get some clarification on uh, uh, the bringing back Winter Wonderland, which I think is a wonderful uh, event. Um, I just wanted to clarify whether is this going to be a, um, and I have no problem with this. I'm just uh, trying to clarify. It's, it, it, the city does uh, like the parade and uh, really kind of a little bit with the regatta. Uh, not not really. I wouldn't call this it, the regatta is kind of a private enterprise slash um, uh, city event. But uh, so was, I think the past Winter Wonderland has been done by the city. Um, I don't think it's ever been a CRA event. So I, I just wanted to say, what, we're, how are we planning on doing this? What is the, uh, what is the mechanism that's going to be in place? Mr. Mayor, Councilwoman Barnaby. Thank you. Um, Winter Wonderland has has never been a fundraiser for anything. Um, I actually had some, and, and I've done it for 19 years. Um, many of those years I did have help from the city because it was such a large-scale event. In the past, we could have 15,000 people downtown. And it was done mainly to promote downtown and to have a family-friendly event. I had someone complain to me one time that, the, that we were sponsoring a Christmas event, and I said, it's not necessarily a Christmas event. And if you think it's glorifying religion, the only religion I think it glorifies is capitalism. <laughs> um, <laughs> because uh, the downtown merchants truly appreciated it. Uh, it was started back in 1996. And it, has, it, it grew and grew and grew and grew. It, it, it is a, a fun event. Uh, it, in, it encourages families to come down. Uh, we do provide or, or work with different street vendors to have different opportunities on the street. Uh, we do not put anything in front of any of the stores that are currently operating there or any of the restaurants. We want people to see what's what's downtown and we want to make it easy for them to be able to participate with those restaurants so for example i don't i have not ever brought in a, an additional pizza truck because fabs has pizza and we'll sell it by the slice kind of thing uh, we do um, face painting and kids make you know kids crafts and and this sort of thing it's not a fundraiser it never made much money. If it made any money, it was put back into the event the next year. And as, as Mr. Roth is, is want to say many times about the, the great recession that we went through, there was many years it was difficult to get sponsors to help with the cost of the event. And I've never really said this publicly before, but um, it was my husband who paid a lot of the bills. 
and there was a couple of years for Christmas, my joke was that I got frozen water and hay bales for Christmas. And we were happy to do it, very happy to do it. Um, in the past, at one point in time, the, the policy was that the city sponsored three events. They sponsored the DeSoto Parade, they sponsored the fireworks, and they, they sponsored Winter Wonderland with in-kind, uh, in-kind donation. And it was the public works, it was the fire department, and it was the police department that primarily did the in-kind donation. I am willing to do whatever anyone wants to do as far as the sponsorship of the event is concerned. And, but I, I felt like I couldn't go out and start asking for sponsors and asking for help until I had the approval of the council to do anything. And let me just also say this, if we keep having these major, major spikes in COVID, it's possible that we will not be able to do it this year. But I would like to have the permission to start working on it and start setting it up. But with the understanding, if it is not safe for us to do it, we're not going to do it. And, and just to, to piggyback off that a little bit, um, when I became mayor, I did reach out to Mrs. Barnaby and, and obviously is sitting in that council ward seat for a number of years. Um, we had it a few years and we tried to get a few people involved. I, I was very supportive of it from the family oriented standpoint and I think it's a great event for us to have downtown and I, I kind of asked her if she would be willing to spearhead it again because we do have a couple of people once it's approved um, will be willing to sponsor it. So it's not going to cost the city any money and again I, I know that um, she didn't, she said it but people appreciate it the years that it was there as a family oriented event and that she and her husband and kids put a lot into it financially and obviously hours wise. So um, it was something that I think that, and, and if we can get out of this COVID part of it, that would bring some very family friendly things downtown. And that's very important to continue that growth. Um, Ms. Coker. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah, and and yes. one thing I forgot to say, it, for several years, the DDA did help sponsor that, it. That's what I was going to say. That there, and it's, and they're still. The last time I looked at that CRA budget, that five thousand dollars that's for downtown merchants, that was kind of earmarked before for Winter Wonderland. And I, I think it fits as economic development. You're, I mean, so. I had been told by several of the merchants, and some of them are not with us anymore. Um, but they said they made more the night of Winter Wonderland than they made in June, July, and August. Mm -hmm. So they really liked seeing it happen. And let me also clarify, yes, the street will be closed off, but I am not asking this permit to permit alcohol on the street. I don't want it vended on the street. I don't want anyone walking around with it. This is a family event. And it only lasts from five until nine. And then we can get, as soon as we can get the street cleared off and everything, the street will be reopened again. <coughs> I, the insurance for permitting alcohol is incredible. And I don't want to have to pay for that. How about eggnog? <laughs> <laughs> Who spiked eggnog? Well, long, I, I, I have a motion to approve it. Long as it is, you just said the city is not putting any money in it. So I think it's a good event. I'd make a motion well, to let, approve it. Well, let's be clear. Yeah. Let's be clear. Um, I'm not asking the city for a donation. Right. However, in the past, you have had city employees that have been down here. We have people cleaning up, picking up, setting up. Mm -hmm. The fire department usually it, with an event this size has a couple of people on a, on a um, golf cart with first aid supplies in case a kid skins their knee, this sort of thing. We almost had a baby delivered there one time. But, Santa Claus is gonna be there? Um, we'll have to see, you know, it's been, I haven't talked to him in some time. Yeah, I think he, he would like that. Uh, again, you're just asking for <clears throat> like public works and uh, uh, amenable 
Like, like we do probably for a farmer's market or something like that, just to, for safety. It's a little bit more than a farmer's market. Because oh, okay. the farmer's market doesn't get 15,000 people down here. Okay. And again, I'm, I, in, the, in the application I said 9,000. I don't know what's going to happen with COVID, right. but I don't want to plan for 1,000 and have 7,000 show up. The first year I did it, I planned on 700. I had 2,000. It was just, it was... <laughs> It was, yeah, I, medication would have been helpful that night. But anyway, um, it was, and, and I have to say, again, public works has always been a big part of this. The fire department has always been a big part of it. Police department, um, Fire Marshal Langston. And, and he said, if we approve it, he will help me again this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so I have a motion to approve it. Yeah. All right, is there a second? I'll second. All right, Mr. Sanders, uh, motion to approve. Ms. Coker, second. Any further discussion? Um, I just want to say, so, yeah, I, I wasn't opposed to even if, if there was funding necessary, but it sounds like it's going to be kind of like the way we do the regatta, which, uh, you know, there's really no funds. We don't put funds into the regatta. We, the TDC gives us money, which we hand to the vendor. Um, but then the, the, the in-kind is the, the staff, the, the, you know, the city pays staff, which there is an indirect cost, a direct cost, which I, I have no, I just wanted to clarify what we were approving, so. Um, well, and I, I appreciate you asking. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share all the information mm -hmm. about it. It's not like I can go to your office and tell right. you because you're voting on it, so. Right. All right, thank you. Any further? Seeing none, we'll start the vote in Ward 2. Yes. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Five? Yes. And one? Yes. Thank you. And to Mr. Mr. Barnaby, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mrs. Melton? Thank you. Moving forward, Mrs. Melton? We have ordinance, the first reading for ordinance 3086, an ordinance of the city of Bradenton, Florida, accepting and declaring certain city property as a park to be known as Curry Park amending chapter 62 article 4 section 62-82 to prohibit fishing bathing swimming wading or otherwise recreationally using the waters at or adjoining curry park amending section 62-83 to designate hours for curry park providing for codification providing for severability and providing for an effective date and we are requesting the second hearing and public hearing be on September 8th. Mr. Rudisell? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's no action uh, requested today. This is a follow-up to the, um, to the uh, settlement and the uh, piece of property at the end of Point Pleasant Avenue. This is basically implementing what we have already agreed to in the, in the settlement agreement. So happy to answer any questions, but no action required today. Okay. Any questions? We'll move forward with the date for the second reading and um, on September 8th, our next council meeting. All right, thank you. Next, we have ordinance 3087. This is the first reading. An ordinance of the city of Bradenton, Florida, amending part one, charter and related laws, subpart B, related laws, article four, police officers retirement system of the code of ordinances of the city of Bradenton, Florida. Amending Section 6, Benefit Amount and Eligibility. Amending Section 7, Pre-Retirement Death. Amending Section 10, Optional Forms of Benefits. Amending Section 16, Minimum Distribution of Benefits. Providing for severability of provisions. Providing for codification. Repealing all ordinances, ordinances in conflict herewith. And providing an effective date. And we'd also like to have the second reading and public hearing on September 8th. Okay. I think that's just basically saying we'll set the date then in the public hearing? Correct. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to reach out to Attorney Christensen. All right. We'll move forward on that. All right. New business. Moving forward. Katerina, thank you. If you'd come forward to Ms. Sermon. Good morning. Good morning, Katerina Jarakio Siren, CRE Executive Director. I'm here in front of you today to discuss a proposed project at Bryant Commons um, that is located in the central CRA 
at the southwest corner of 9th Avenue East and 3rd Street East. It's a proposed senior affordable housing community consisting of a three-story, 53-unit concrete building with surface parking. If, you are, if the city council and the CRA board uh, approve this project, it will be 100% of affordable housing with all units set aside for senior residents earning 60% or below of the average medium income. Um, we have here with us today the developer, uh, New Star, Brian Evian from New Star Development LLC, which is an entity that was formed by North Star Development, and they would be acting as the developer on North Star's uh, New Florida developments. Um, so they're here to request a local government area of opportunity funding investment from the city of Bradenton to support the Brian Common Senior Affordable Housing Development in the form of a 460,000 low interest rate loan at 1.5% with interest only payments at the end of uh, uh, from year one to year three and principal and remain to, uh, remaining interest payable at year 18. This project is consistent with the city's and the CRA's goals of assisting within the development of affordable housing and by if the city council approves this request, it will increase the probability of New Star's tax credit application being funded. A little bit of history on Brian Commons. Back in 2015, the central CRA uh, issued an RFP, RFQ for the development of these seven properties that consist Brian Commons. Um, seven companies responded to the RFP. Uh, there was a committee that included the <coughs> community members as well as central CRA staff and central um, and the advisory board. And they s invited four of those developers to come back and make their presentations. After they heard the four presentations, they selected two to move forward to the next step. Uh, North Star Development was one of them and the Benoit Group was the second one. So the central CRA in uh, 2015 reviewed all the, the two applications that were brought forward to them and they selected North Star Development to, uh, to move forward with both Lincoln Village, which used to be Love Apartments, which was just completed a few weeks ago, and Brian Commons. Um, in 2016, they signed the Memorandum of Understanding, the central CRA and North Star Development so we're here today to, uh, to see if the City Council would like to honor the MOU and move forward with uh, New Star slash North Star uh, developing Brian Commons. Um, I have uh, Brian, I'll call him forward. He has a presentation to give and we're here to answer mm -hmm. any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, council members. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here, and we're, we're uh, really honored and privileged to have been the CRA's partner uh, developing the Lincoln Commons, or excuse me, <laughs> the Lincoln Village project. Um, as Katarina mentioned, we've just finished construction um, probably about a month ago. We're already 100% occupied. I think we have a waiting list, maybe 500 names long. Uh, for that property, so uh, there's obviously a tremendous need in this community for affordable housing. Um, and um, for various reasons, we chose to pursue development of the Lincoln Village site first, uh, but we always intended to move forward with the Bryant Commons site as well. Uh, and as you probably are aware, it takes sometimes several tries um, to receive a tax credit award, uh, especially in Florida, it's highly competitive and um, that, that's just due to the tremendous need statewide. Uh, so th the funding that Katarina mentioned, I'll just touch on that briefly before telling you a little bit about our background. Um, probably four or five years ago, the tax credit allocation agency in Tallahassee decided to sort of empower local governments um, with this funding opportunity that essentially um, 
gives extra consideration to developments that have this type of funding. They've established specific funding goals for their annual uh, tax credit award cycle for projects that have this funding. And this year, uh, they have 10 stated funding goals and six of them are allotted for projects that have this local government area of opportunity funding. Um, a couple of other ones are, are projects that have revitalization goals, uh, ones that are near the sun rail system. They're pretty specific. Uh, so this has become almost a necessity to work with local governments and, and secure this type of funding in order to increase your probability of receiving an award. So that's why we're requesting this um, from the city today. And I apologize for the short notice. Uh, the applications are actually due this month. Uh, and that's because Florida housing kind of moved up the deadlines this year unexpectedly. Typically they're due in October or November, but they've pulled them forward to August because they want to be done with the selection process by the end of the calendar year. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about New Star, um, we're basically a joint venture with North Star, um, the primary developer of, of Lincoln Village. Um, the Florida leadership, including me, um, we're, we're spinning off a new Florida entity to focus on development here. We're still partners with Northstar. Um, we're still using the same general contractor. Uh, they're still providing our, our guarantees to the tax credit investors. Um, it's just kind of a, a new entity that we formed to, to focus on our Florida developments. Um, I and my partner in Newstar uh, have been with Northstar for um, six and seven years, respectively. So. Um, we've been heavily involved in the developments here in Florida, including Lincoln Village. Um, I serve as president, and my partner, Justin Corder, serves as the VP of development. And, uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but we do specialize in working with public housing authorities and CRAs and other nonprofits. We don't really pursue our own developments. Um, we don't like to compete with our partners. so. Um, we focus on that and, and that's become more important in also in the last couple of years in Florida because Florida housing requires uh, applicants to prioritize their applications and each principal applicant is only allowed to have three priority one applications so we um, it's important for us to limit our partnerships so that we don't end up pitting partners against one another um, a little bit of background here, uh, just kind of on our financing experience. Um, with our partner, Northstar, we've been doing this um, since the late 90s. Um, we've closed a, a number of tax credit transactions, primarily in New York, Michigan, Texas, and Florida. And um, you can see kind of the ov overall dollar value of those. Um, these low-income tax credits are available in 9% credits and 4% credits, and they're just kind of different programs, but these are the two, two tracks of the transactions we've closed using those types of credits. Um, these are just kind of, you know, the units that we've completed, again, across those four states uh, over the past uh, 20 to 30 years. And we've got just some photos included in here of some other developments we've completed in Florida. I, I believe these are only Florida. Um, this is a senior facility, 61 units down in Venice that we completed back in 2014. Um, this is probably the most similar to how we would envision the Bryant Commons project looking just because it's a similar size. Uh, it's also three stories, um, concrete block building, um, you know, pretty, actually pretty compact development site, but we still <coughs> managed to, to fit the units on there with surface parking, uh, and it turned out beautifully. We actually just finished a second phase down there with the Venice Housing Authority with, that was family housing right next to this one. Um, this is a project we completed last year in Tarpon Springs uh, called Eagle Ridge, 71 units of family affordable housing. Um, again, that one was 100% occupied, I think, one month after completion. Uh, this is the second phase in Venice that I mentioned. That's family housing that we finished, I think, about a year and a half ago. Also 100% occupied. Um, this was a unique project in Pinellas County that w where we actually used <coughs> conventional construction uh, financing. 
but leveraged a couple of the Pinellas County Housing Authority's other properties and also utilized the Pinellas County Land Trust to acquire the land. And um, they're, they're a great partner of ours as well. This one, I believe we completed, yes, in 2019, uh, 92 units of workforce housing. Uh, this is a project we did with the Punta Gorda Housing Authority, 120 senior units. Again, three-story building with surface parking, um, just for various reasons that kind of steps up well for using these this tax credit financing. Uh, this was another project we completed in Pinellas County with the Housing Authority there. Um, this was actually a gut rehab project. Um, so really nice reuse of public housing there in Pinellas County. Uh, Pinellas Heights was another senior facility where we actually utilized 4% tax credits and bonds issued by the Pinellas County HFA. 153 units, so that's a little larger, larger project there. Um, that's, that's the Venetian Walk project in Venice again. Um, this one's a little bit older, completed in 2009. Um, family housing down in uh, Punta Gorda again. Key West style, and these were built after that housing authority lost all of their public housing um, due to Hurricane Charlie. Um, so we've been rebuilding with them for several years down in Punta Gorda. Uh, looks like that one might have been in there twice. And I think that might be the end of the presentation. Um, mm -hmm. So again, um, we specialize in partnering with, with CRAs and housing authorities. Um, we've thoroughly enjoyed working with the staff to complete the Lincoln Village project. We're really excited with how it turned out. I don't know if everyone's had a chance to see it, but um, it's, it's a vast improvement over the love apartments that were previously on that property. And... Um, <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> um, our management has um, really been pleased uh, you know, with, with the residents uh, who, who applied to, to reside at Lingen Village. Um, contrary to what we were hearing concerns about, I don't think there have been any parking issues that I know of to date. Um, so we're excited about that, and we would really appreciate the city's support uh, with moving forward to the next phase. And I'm available for questions. Thank you. Questions? Comments? I have questions. Sure, Mr. Sanders. Um, <clears throat> you're asking for 460,000, one half percent for 18 years, starting after the third year. Will it accrue during the one to three year period, or, or would you be interest free for the one to three year period? I, I, I'm not clear on that. Um, I think that's subject to negotiation, but uh, I believe the way we requested it and structured it, it would be um, interest-free during those three years. So toll during construction and then payments start. Start accumulating it. So why have you asked for 18 years when you asked for uh, less than that on the, on the uh, Lincoln Village? Um, the 18 years is typical of these tax credit projects, and the reason for that is the tax credit compliant peri compliance period runs for 15 years. And typically, um, well, maybe not typically, but from time to time, the ownership of the affordable housing project will want to refinance once the tax credit compliance period runs its course. And structuring it for 18 years just makes sure that the primary loans, uh, which are typically in first position, have the opportunity to, to uh, also be refinanced at the same time. And I believe the terms on those loans typically run 17 years. So we typically try to structure our, our local government and housing authority loans for 18 years, just so that they fall outside of that since they're in a second position, typically. So your loans could be restructured any time, and if that were the case, then that this would be paid off? Um, most likely it would be, yes. And, and that's typically the way we would do that. And the, the reason for that, um, we don't typically take the affordability component out of place because there's a deed restriction with Florida housing that lasts for 50 years. Mm -hmm. But just by, by the nature of time passing, the rents typically increase on an annual basis and the rents will be higher at that time, right. such to enable right. uh, exactly. better loan terms typically. Exactly, and I saw these rents on like, a, for example, one bedroom is 
345 to 857, I assume as a, based on income level, which is, is, is very affordable. Well, that rent is for the extremely low income residents, right. and that actually assumes us receiving some project-based vouchers from the Manatee County Housing Authority. Okay. If we didn't receive those, um, the rents would probably be roughly 40% higher than that, but still very affordable. 40% higher than the 857? Um, the 857 would be for the 60% AMI residents. Um, and if we didn't receive the vouchers, that 857 would drop would actually drop to 780 a month. Um, the vouchers actually provide higher rent revenue than than just a standard tax credit. Unit. So it would be no more than 857. Correct. Okay, and the same on the two. And that years. that actually includes a federal subsidy because of the vouchers. Oh, right. So the, right. the tenant paid would not go above 780. Right. I understand. Uh, the uh, the, um, the 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 property itself, or, or this is on a 99-year lease? Um, I believe it's a 75-year lease. 75-year lease yes. at what, is that part of the, something that you'd sign later, or is that part of this, uh, um, see it in th here? That would be signed with the CRA, because the CRA see, that's is the, the other title CRA pay, and, and that's, and we'll just be discussing that later, so I won't, I, I believe that's 10,000 a year. Okay, so uh, how does that work with, with the, the ad valorem tax do you still have to pay ad valorem tax on a leased uh, land so typically the land is tax free because it would continue to be owned by the CRA but we pay taxes on the um, buildings and the way that's calculated is based on the revenue so that that gives a little bit of a break because it's affordable um, but we pay property taxes on the revenues um, only does earned. that does that exclude the city yes it excludes the city so you know okay so it, it, it does county and school for that I, and is there impact fees uh, waivers on this uh, we have not requested those yet we did receive some waivers for Lincoln Village and and I would anticipate either coming back before council if that approval is required or, or working with staff to request yeah. those on this yeah. project as well and um, the this uh, you're president of the uh, New Star, which is a new LLC, uh, and you're calling it kind of a subsidiary of the North, North Star, which uh, did they, and the North Star guarantees the uh, uh, New Star. And when was that formed? As a, a uh, that was formed in 2020. 20, um, uh, a New Star, yeah. New Star was formed in 2020. North Star is a member of this LLC, so it's kind of a joint venture. So I didn't and see a name on here. Who's signing this? contract who's signing this uh, interest um, the loan would be signed by ultimately signed by Bryant Commons um, limited partnership and new star one of our entities would be the managing partner of that entity um, you have to you have to form a new entity to receive the tax credit investor in as a partner um, so that's who that's who the loan would be with so it's it's a subsidiary of a subsidiary of a subsidiary <laughs> um, it's it's we have a holding company um, and that is the managing partner of all of our tax credit entities and it's it's just those two okay so you, you as president signed the, the the agreement for bryant commons um, uh, for new star and does, right. does anyone from north star sign or guarantee it um, their guarantees are provided to the tax credit investors um, because they require construction completion guarantees and operating deficit guarantees in, in case you know anything goes wrong during the project. Um, the the loan would be secured by a mortgage on the property, so the guarantee would be the income going forward from the operation. Okay, I'm just I'm just asking it. it, it no, I'm in favor of the project. Okay, I, no, I understand. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always ask a lot of questions whether I'm favorite or not favorite, so sometimes you can't tell the difference. Um, because it's better now to ask questions than it is to say, I wish I'd ask later. And this is extremely good for affordable housing, and this is a true definition of affordable housing, which sometimes is used in a, in a, in a way that I'm, it upsets me as attainable housing, workforce housing, affordable housing. And I like to say, well, what's the rent? <laughs> What, what's the rent? And, and I'll, I'll, I'll determine what buzzwords to attach to it. So anyway, this is very affordable very, and a, a very good project. 
I'm, I'm for it. I just wanted to ask those questions, and you've answered them. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Roth. Yeah. Um, so I I think I've so been through this before. Um, so the uh, it, it, you're going for the four percent tax credit. Uh, this would be for nine percent tax credits. Okay, and then if you don't get the nine percent, do you? Because sometimes they kick down to the four. Or you you just ch chasing a nine. We sometimes do, um, but there's there's typically a a much larger funding gap. Okay. And for this year's application, we have not identified. Okay. So you're a, a source to cover that gap. And that's around April. Uh, no, it's it's in August this year. Uh, oh, okay. We would we would know if we were successful by the end of this year. Um, with the application. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Because I, I thought normally you got a deadline to turn it in and then they make the decision. So you'll know by the end of the year. Right. The, that's the deadline not, for this application is actually. Okay, so they moved up month. the t deadline, so they also move up the uh, notification. Correct. Okay. And then if I remember correctly, when we've done these loans in the past, um, we've had companies that didn't get the contract or didn't get the tax credit, the, the money doesn't change hands, right? Uh, so that's the, correct. This four hundred sixty thousand is only if you get awarded the, the project. Correct. Okay. So this is that's it's not, it's really a promissory note at this time. It will become a loan, if you get the tax credit. Yeah, I guess I should clarify. So so the way this works, and and this is another, um, I guess facet of these funding goals that Florida Housing has established. Um, this commitment would be good for this application only. Um, and it actually right. states the, app, the, the request for applications um, that has the year 2021 in it. So this, this commitment goes away if we don't receive an award this year. We would come back before council hopefully next year um, for a repeat because they actually offer extra incentives for projects that received the local government funding <coughs> in the previous year's uh, award cycle but weren't funded and are right. coming back with that same funding. Right. So we would we would hope to be back before you next year Good. Uh, Good. with another request if we're not successful this time. Because we have, I, I know that we've done this in the past, you know, put up the, uh, uh, you know, made the agreement to give the loan. They haven't gotten the tax credit. We, the, no money was changed hands. We, they left. So, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with this arrangement. Right. I, I agree with this that. Is, this, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I wanted to thank you for coming because I, was blown away when I went and toured Lincoln Village. I've been in the industry for a while, and I feel like you put out a product product that is equal to market rate, and uh, I was very impressed with it. So I, I am assuming that we can expect the same thing in the next project. Do you expect it to be substantially the same, the materials? And I was just impressed with block construction, your finishings, hurricane windows. I mean, you built market product in my opinion thank you very much we, we pride ourselves on that um, I don't know that it would be the same finishes we try not to, to duplicate too much well, yeah um, but there actually are some incentives in these funding applications uh, for concrete construction and being this close to the to the coast you really need to do that anyway so mm -hmm. we absolutely would, would use that type of construction are you gonna build us something that we can uh, submit for uh, potential awards <laughs> I see you've won a bunch so I certainly hope so um, and we would we would be happy to work with city staff on on pursuing some of those maybe even for Lincoln Village too yeah okay Mr. Ms. Ms. Coachman Go ahead. I thank all my council members for asking those questions it clarified a lot and uh, also set my mind at ease also. Given that you have built, you have developed something that is absolutely great for the community and also understanding that there's a 500, uh, <laughs> uh, a number of 500 people that are on a waiting list that definitely indicates we need this and feeling like the same quality will be a part of this development i'm i'm excited about it i'm i'm supportive of it um, it brings a lot to the community well i wish you luck i hope you get the 
in the first round by December. A good Christmas present for not only you, but the city of Bradenton. Page two, Mr. Ruff, it does say that if this tax credit, you know, is not received, that it's the, the, the agreement's null and void and you'll come back to us. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully you don't have to come back to us. You'll have that certificate for the tax credits and begin to, uh, well, if, if you did do that, well, no, I don't want to jinx it. Okay. But I, I, I wish you all the luck because uh, it, it, this doesn't tie up property if we want to do something else, but we don't have anything that works on this. And so I, I wish you the best to, to and, uh, and luck to get, get this. And I think you probably will. Seeing um, obviously the waiting list that we have, and does that help us in any way when you go for these tax credits that you show the need for it in a community, or, or maybe every community has that same need, but, but does that help us, or does that, how do we promote that more? How do we say we, we need this? Um, it does not go into consideration uh, in the applications. There have been some in the past that were narrative-based, and um, actually, for the Lincoln Village project, that one was um, a revitalization award so, I mean, the city is really responsible for getting that award because we, we really just talked about all of the new development along the Riverwalk and, and how it was revi revitalizing the community and, you know, the formation of the various CRAs. Um, you're, ab you're absolutely right. The need is great statewide, um, but what Florida Housing has done is empower the local governments that, that see a greater need to uh, put this funding behind the projects that they think are going to address that need. Um, but the way they see it, um, you know, if they don't award one project, the next one is just as critical. Um, so, unfortunately, that's not a component now, but it, it could be in the future. I, I do know that they offer specific, award, specific extra awards for the counties and municipalities that are more, the most populous, like Miami-Dade. Um, and that, that's just a greater need in, in numbers not necessarily in percentages, because I think that part's pretty constant throughout the state. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or? Looking for a motion. Motion. Looking for a motion. Mrs. Coachman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make the motion to approve the request by New Star for a low interest loan to support their tax credit application for RFA 2021-2022 housing credit financing for affordable housing developments. Second. Second. Okay. Three sec four seconds. Four seconds, right. We have a motion and a second by Mrs. Barnaby. I, I'd heard first. So, um, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll start the vote in Ward 5. Yes. One? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? Yes. Four? Yes. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Perry? Mayor, under uh, item number eight, unfinished business, we have the issue of the legislative affairs contractor discussion. Uh, Councilor, I'm sure you, uh, you're aware that this issue has kind of come up previously, and uh, we wanted to really tender it to Council for a preference on how to proceed. Uh, Mr. McClellan issued through purchasing the RFP that was authorized by prior Council action. There was response. Um, that had three vendors um, that, were, that, were, that, that were listed, and we're at a point now where we really want to know how we want to move forward. I've had the opportunity to discuss kind of the concepts with folks. I think there, people recognize the benefits of a legislative affairs of individual, and it's more of, an, of a question at this particular point of... Uh, of a selection of, of, of an individual or going back to a drawing board perhaps for additional uh, people. That's up to you all and I will tender it back to mayor and council. All right, thank you. Comments? Questions? Yeah. Mr. Roth? Uh, uh, well, I mean, I just want, to, we did discuss this, we came on, I know when uh, um, uh, Ms. Coker was new. Uh, this was one of the first things she brought up, so this has been uh, on the table for a while. Uh, you know, we've gone back and forth on different different ways of going. 
I, I was kind of surprised when I saw the uh, email that it had gone down to three. I went had, I, I know that we'd voted on it, but I don't. I didn't really see that um, uh, or th that only three responded. And um, to be honest, I mean, I, I'm just I just find it hard to believe. I don't know where that was advertised, how it was advertised, but I just find it suspicious that there was only three people that were interested in this because I I know that. Uh, Lobbying is is um, pretty big business. That uh, I, I I'd be in favor of starting over. Mr. Sanders, well, I think there was more than three. I think it was narrowed down to three. Wasn't there a committee? No, Mr. No, it wasn't. There was only three. Well, I had more. I saw submittals. more than that. There were only three submittals. We had many sent out beyond the three. In other words, other people had requested the documents but only three actually submitted their package of information. So it was okay. sent out to everybody. It, it was well, open. It was, it was publicly advertised. Publicly advertised. It was, it, How was it publicly advertised? I'd have to verify wh where, but I know it was in the Bradenton Herald as well as on the city website. I'm not sure if uh, purchasing put it any place else. I can find out for you to, to verify that. And you said, I think I remember last time you said 40 people might have. Was that a number I heard? or? I honestly don't recall. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought there was a, a large number that asked for a packet. Yeah, there, but there, were, only there three. were there were far more than three that right. received the RFP package. But there was nobody nobody in staff or anybody in the government eliminated some out of the no. response. Only three responded. No, we only received three submittals on the day that they were due. All right. And that was uh, I think uh, July 21st. It was a date, Miss Coker. Yeah, I, I'm just really concerned about the way this whole process has gone, and now we've complied each time with, you know, oh, we want everybody to bring in people. Then we all brought people forward. Oh, no, now we need an RFP. Now we've done an RFP. I feel like we need to move on this. And, I mean, I have not really uh, had a, an opportunity to really look at anything, but I just feel like it just keeps kicking the can down the road. And here we are. We should, we should be meeting with this person, getting our legislative agenda put together. I mean, we're already behind the, the eight ball again. And, and so we put out an RFQ, and to now say you're not going to, you know, at least make a decision on the people that responded, I just um, Well, I think one of the things that's important to me. and the reason that we may have discussed we didn't do it last year was because we were already past deadlines and things that really to get anything in in September – we know is when you get the meat of the things mm -hmm. in the legislative bills, if I'm not mistaken. So September is a date that, you know, and again, it's going to be up to the council to decide go forward or kind of then have another year. And I think there's an opportunity from what I've seen and talked to different legislators that this may be the year with the opportunity to get some of those big projects, some funding in there that we might be able to get some of the infrastructure and things done. Mr. Mayor, Councilor, I, I think it's also important to be mindful of where we are at the national level with the federal infrastructure bills that are coming out and, and how that passes down to states. And the states are the single source agencies typically going to local governments as the subgrantees and things like that. And, and it's not just a, a matter of an individual that can deal with, so to speak, Tallahassee in the legislative process but a whole administrative process of potential funding opportunities that come down from, uh, from a higher place, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Washington, sometimes Tallahassee, right. And, and so it, it, I think it is important if, if we really want to start leveraging um, the financial opportunities using these types of, um, of leveraged funds to, to move forward. And this is a one-year contract, so if we did get somebody that we didn't like later on, we can regroup next year or we can uh, like them and see we got a bunch of grants and opportunities. But the opportunity, I believe, is now from the standpoint of working with that person to get our needs in the pipeline. Mrs. Barnaby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm trying to remember. I believe not only did we we put something in the Brain and Herald, but we, there were several different websites that information was put on. That's what I seem to remember. Um, but I can't, I, I can't testify 
to that. Um, I, I would like to see the three that we have, and if we can't get a majority vote on those three, then <coughs> look at reopening it. But there may be there may be some really good people in those three that, that applied. Mrs. Coachman? Um, I have no qualms about moving forward, but maybe it's because I'm a newbie. I, I really was thinking that I would have some idea when this was going to be publicized. I had people that had said to me, well, hey, let me know when it's, you know, when the RFP or whatever is uh, placed out there and I didn't I, I guess I didn't follow up or I didn't stay astute to what was going on so hopefully in the future should we not like this person that we decide this time kind of let a sister know <laughs> when you're putting that out because I I'm, I really missed it I didn't even know when it went out. Well, I'll be honest. I mean, that was discussed uh, because I asked about it a couple of times, and I know that the, I mean, I don't remember the date, but I remember it being discussed in a meeting about when the app, when the RFP had to be responded to, and I, because I know I kept asking about it, and I know it was discussed in some open meetings, and anybody, and I agree with Miss Barnaby that. I am pretty sure it went through some websites that a potential lobbyist, you know, you know, trade magazines or whatever, um, so people in the trade would would know that. Okay. I'm not saying that it didn't happen. I'm just saying I wasn't aware. Mm -hmm. um, and it was discussed in meetings, but again, I, I don't recall hearing a specific, oh, it's going out on Wednesday or it's going out. I just, I'm sorry, I just missed that. Directed. I'm just asking to be a little more I, I would also be happy to provide all of you with the list of the who received the RFP and then chose not to respond I mean so that you could see that it wasn't just three people who were looking at it we were surprised we only got three too okay. so next steps mr. Perry if, if the council voted to go with the three RFPs and then get that information out and then make a decision I mean is that Obviously, I don't think anybody has the three no. to make that decision today, but and then put it on the September 9th agenda to. I think, and, and let me uh, kind of confer with Mr. McClellan. I'd, I'd like to get his opinion as well. Uh, I, I think really what we would do is basically, uh, it, it's already been authorized to issue an RFP with a general idea of the amount of the contract and, um, you know, within the budget. And, and so. I think what we would do is form an, what's called an ad hoc committee, um, meaning that it would be a mix of people, I'm assuming three people, to evaluate the candidates, try to get a little input into the what specific uh, best and final considerations are for that, and bring that to you after a recommendation, not a selection, but a recommendation to council for approval of a proposed contract. Is that right, Mr. McClellan? Yes. I mean the way it was advertised was that the submittals would be received. There would be a committee of city employees who would be um, assigned to review them and rank them. There's a scoring criteria in the submittal process. Um, and then there's a separate price component. All of them submitted a sealed price that's separate from the RFQ. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I believe that Mrs. Coker was the one that brought this up, and she was the one that was meeting uh, informally, I believe, with the prior administrator and, and maybe someone else before this went out. Um, I would like to see her still included in that process. And, and that was my recommendation the last time we talked about it, was that in terms of selecting a committee, it would make logical sense for at least one member of council to be on that committee because you are the people who are going to directly utilize the services. Well, and she's the one that has, I mean, we all have experience going to Tallahassee and talking with them, but Ms. Coker has lobbying experience. Mr. Mayor and, and, and Councilor Barnaby, and, and I just, if we could go to Mr. Rudisell just to make sure that within such sunshine provisions that would be acceptable, I'd ask for just some quick um, oh, advice <coughs> on that. Ms. Coker on the committee? Yes, sir. Yes, that, that would be okay. fine. I mean, the, the committee will be a sunshine committee, so. 
Yeah, the, the only time that there would be a meeting of the committee is after each member on the committee had scored their results. And then typically the committee gets together once to review everybody's score and come up with a, a one recommendation to come before council. But we would like to try to get that done before September 9th, so because yes. there is a time sensitive getting <coughs> things into Tallahassee if we're going to ask for the biggest bang for our buck. That's how I feel. I mean, that's, I think that's now's the time. Because if you're, same thing we'd be talking about January of this past year, we've already <coughs> missed some of those crucial times to, to get the best results that we hope for. Today is, Mr. Mayor, August 25th. I quite frankly think that these folks usually can move fairly agile and, and quickly. It's whether we can probably, as a, as a group, establish the committee and schedule the dates for the sunshine and, and try to get it in by the August 9th. If not, it's fairly close to there. And, and I know we're in budget cycle at that time. So, you know, with me at least, it's pretty much all hands on deck budget and then the other issues that are kind of things that have to be dealt with um, immediately also come up. But, but we will d move it with uh, post haste as quick as we can. Do we need a motion for that? I, I just want to. Yes, Mr. Roth. Yeah, um, so I just wanted to, so, um, I, yeah, I would like to see the, uh, who, who, who questioned here, mm -hmm. you know, who, who, uh, who, you know, asked for the packet. Absolutely. And, but also, uh, I'd like to know where, where and when it was advertised. I'd like mm -hmm. to, so, and I did want to say, um, just, just for the record, um, I too have a, a, a long record of, of lobbying. Um, that uh, through the Florida League of Cities, I, for many years on the council, I was a lobbyist. Uh, I'm not looking for free or session or anything like that, but for the Florida League of Cities, is we did not have a lobbyist. I, I traveled with the Florida League of Cities. I, I spent uh, I spent several trips to Washington on my own dime um, to push the Wears Creek project through. I uh, worked with the 21st Century Group um, with the county to actually get some uh, the Wears Creek project. Uh, with Tallahassee uh, legislative action days for many many years and uh, but also on my own a couple of times I went up there on my own to lobby so uh, you know we haven't experienced I, I, I separate wasn't lobbyists sliding as well. you in, in the least okay I'm just I'm just saying that's it's <laughs> so a motion to move forward with yeah. the, the three with setting up the committee and doing it ASAP well again as as it was as it was advertised it was it was, it was indicated in the RFP package to those folks that the city administrator would assign the committee right. and the committee would meet and vote. So, right, so I don't know that council needs to approve. I don't, I don't know that we need that? to weigh in. I just think it needs to be put on the work plan and get it done. And I, I would also tell you that there, there were electronic PDF copies of the submittals without the pricing information. Those were all saved on the city network. I'd be happy to provide you a link so you could look at them they're, I think I think it was limited to 50 pages, so they're they're not hundreds of pages long to review. So moving forward, we'll go with what we had previously discussed and and get all the information out, working through the city administrator. Any questions by any council people on that? Right, I have questions. Okay, Mr. Sanders. <coughs> we don't have a motion on the floor, do we? No, no motion. All right, I'm with Mr. Roth, and I think Mrs. Coachman. I'm a little fuzzy about this because I thought I saw more applications than that. I think I still have them in my office. And I know one particular person that actually came through Councilman Roth and submitted it and was asked if they would be contacted. So I, I know there, I don't believe there's one of the three. So I think that there's, uh, I, I'm, I'm confused and I don't think that's a fair process. Uh, I would disagree that the process is entirely fair it was publicly advertised and again I'll be happy to provide you the list of the firms that received a copy of the submittal package whoever chose to submit it was publicly opened um, and that's our normal procedure for doing advertisements of this nature so I, I don't think anybody so I think went out of the way to preclude anybody from Mr. This. Sanders I think though that's the opportunity they're going to bring it back to us give you all the information so you'll be able to see everything and then make an informed decision, yes or no, at the next time we vote. So this is just the process that's moving forward. So you will still have an opportunity to find out if it was what we think is fair or not fair. What? 
All right, thank you. Anything else on that, Mr. Perry? Or just no, oh, sir, just note that uh, Ms. Melton will correctly identify the minutes supporting the direction to the administration on that matter so that there is no ambiguity at a later date. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Perry. All right, moving forward, council uh, hold, reports. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we can't move forward without a vote on this, can we? Uh, I mean, we can't just say it's consensus because I didn't hear consensus. I heard, I didn't hear. We're not moving forward to go with it. We're just moving forward to bring information to you and then when you have more information to make a decision at a later date. Th that's correct. Mr. Mayor and Council Sanders, from my understanding, the way it was advertised and, and, and approved previously, it allowed for the um, development and issuance of the RFP that a, the city administrator would basically form an ad hoc committee to vet the responders, which we have the three responders, the issue of it going out, and we will come back with a recommendation of an ad hoc committee to the council at a later time that they can accept, reject, question regarding how it was issued, who it was issued to, how many people received it, where it was issued, and a host of other important issues. But I think that the direction is that I am to basically uh, proceed in accordance with, with the RFP that was issued, which includes the formulation of an ad hoc committee. Is that right, Mr. McClellan, as, as, as to the, the RFP uh, specifications? Thank you. The, the RFP, uh, we didn't, ha why didn't the council receive those three applicants after the RFP so that we said, let's move forward on that then? We, we, I, this never came back before the council. Again, the, the, the bids were, or I shouldn't say bids, but the packages of information were received from the three individuals. Um, unfortunately, they were opened like the day before Mr. Perry started. Okay, so when w I sent an email on July 21st to Mr. Perry indicating that the, here are the three that have been received. They are saved on the Z drive of our, of our network for people to review and Here's the process that was spec'd out in the advertisement to say that the city administrator would establish a selection committee to review the submittals, rank them, and come before with a recommendation to council. So that was the end of June, 1st of July? That was you the said end of July. I don't know. They were advertised, it was, it was advertised for 30 days during the period of June. I'd, I'd have to get the official. But, but my question is, if, if we had three, why didn't those three come back to council so we got three? If, if I could take a stab at that, and I appreciate Councilor Sanders' question. Um, the procurement process itself, it, it's if we were hiring and, and, and advertised for a, a construction company to build us a road. Three people respond. We kind of look at the RFP, what the specs were, what the selection criteria, and specified and set up a selection committee and say, you're the recommended road contractor and that road contractor comes back to you and that's the decision that you make. Here, it's not a road contractor, it's a government affairs specialist. So to answer your question about why those three didn't come back to you with precision, I think the answer is because they're not supposed to come back to you until well we do the, all the other projects committee. that way. No, no, but they come back to you. I mean, don't get me wrong and, and, and I don't mean to, in any way um, in, in, infer that it doesn't come back to you, but it doesn't come back to you at that point because the RFP says it's supposed to be selected. And I think within the procurement integrity process, it's supposed to be evaluated on its, on its merits in accordance with what the specifications of the RFP is, in accordance with the selection, and then recommend it to you. So there's formality to the, the process. Well, I think we expected to see the three applicants and, and at this point right today, right. I, do, I do not have that in front of me and that. Can I? Yeah. Can I, I just add something Mrs. here? Coker. Okay, um, yeah, I, I remember distinctly we had a vote that I was supposed to kind of take this on and I was working with Carl a legal, it was legally advertised that you had to respond by July the 20th. So now that's where it ended and that coincides right about when Carl was leaving. I think that's why we've got a little lapse here. I haven't even seen him, the RFP. And July I was 20th or June 20th? July 20th. So it wasn't that's supposed to close? That's the 30 close? days it was advertised. That was the, close. no, that's when the re responses were required. Right. 
Well, when you just said that it was supposed to be, he did it, got it the day but he came in. What day did you come in? 19th. 19th? Okay. Correct. I'm just and I telling sent him you. an email dated July 21st saying, here's the results. And obviously, with six weeks of budget stuff to work through and staffing, this is a little right. bit farther well, out. But, I, I but again, it's going to come back to you to vote yes or no. I understand, but with that much confusion, I, 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 I think the process might have gotten. Um, I can tell the you. Process but it should be redone. Should be. Should be. Well, Why? We've, we've got, we have not. Mr. Rudisell, do you have? Uh, you kind of look like you got a comment you want to make. Well, I was just going to say. That, I mean, the process was laid out in the RFP. It was what was uh, discussed originally at the council. So, without any action of the council, it will proceed in accordance with the way that it was advertised. So, uh, as we've talked about, the council has the right if it wants to throw out all the all the bids and start over the council can do that but without any action of the council it will proceed as as it was originally approved mrs barnaby and if i might add if i was a vendor looking to do something with the city or looking to provide a service to the city and we capriciously throw these things out and start all over, I'm not sure I'd be interested in doing business with someone that does that. Now, I think we have a process. I think we need to let the process play out. And if we are not happy with the three that we received and we feel that there might be a, a better choice out there, then that's when you redo it. Did the, the RFP way you, come back to the council? I'm so Hold sorry. On. I'm sorry. I thought you was done. The way government chooses to do things and the optics of how you do it are just as important as the way you choose to do it. And now I'm finished. Mr. Sanders. Did, did the, is there a record that the RFP came back to the council for a review or a vote? It came back to me. You guys assigned me to work on this. Carl sent me a copy of the RFP that was going out, asked if I had any questions, had a couple of little questions. It was all pretty much standard. It was very long. And so we sent the RFP out. So in a sense, I mean, if you, you tasked me with doing this. So I did it. Um, and so we're, I, we're I don't understand the questioning at this point, to be honest. Are, are you saying that there are applicants that, that are submitted and they're not being considered? I, I don't know. <laughs> I know I saw more than three. Applications are to the RFQ. Well, I, when they came in, how they came in, I, I don't know. Well, that's the information well, we'll get. Well, if they can't follow those instructions, that. that's, you know. All right, well, I think, I think we've talked about this a lot, and I think it's going to get an opportunity to talk more. So I, I'd like to move forward and get to the council reports. Um, and we're starting today with Ms. Coker. I don't have anything. Okay. Ms. Barnaby. Uh, looking forward to some Manatee High football. <laughs> <laughs> if we could get it. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Roth. Mayor. Um, yes, uh, today's minutes uh, that we approved on July 14th. Um, there was a motion that was tabled uh, concerning um, the uh, realized Bradenton project uh, that uh, I had pulled it says here according to the notes uh, voices concerned about the signage approval refer for, uh, reference and consent agenda item uh, the understanding was and we, we went back and looked at the minutes that the matter would be brought with coordination with the community redevelopment agency instead of going straight to council um, that has taken place uh, so um, the, uh, some of the questions that were brought up had been resolved. So at this point in time, uh, do you have the packets? I'm basically pulling an uh, item off table. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. 
Mr. Roth. Um, yeah, so uh, this was this was what uh, was presented us to the consent agenda. Um, the um, there's just a couple of changes that have been made. Uh, the one thing was that there wasn't uh, city uh, the city buildings um, there had been previously not approved, so they're they're um, they're off. It's it's is all just uh, through the the packet, and then the uh, the sign was changed um, to uh, advertise Bradenton. Uh, we love the city Bradenton instead of uh, a realized Bradenton movement. So um, uh, anyway, this is this is basically what we had at the consent agenda. So is that a motion been. to? So, uh, yeah, mo motion to approve the um, previous consent agenda item. Uh, motion to approve the special event. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion? I have Mr. Questions. Sanders, yes. Yeah. Uh, it says that the sign is no larger than 12 square feet. It's supposed to be pre answer. Yeah. 72 inches in height. I thought these were banners that hung on the post. Uh, the sign, these, well, th there's, there is the opportunity for advertisements to go onto private, uh, private buildings. On windows yes, of the yes. business. But they're right. not 12 are, are, feet. You said advertising. Are these being sold? No. No? Um, well, and, and I think what you're referring to is the code allowance for. Oh, that's the code? Yeah. And so that's signage associated with a special event. Okay. And it can be up to 12 square feet, but I believe Ms. Isham is uh, proposing that they be three by three or nine square feet. Mm -hmm. Three foot by three foot. Yeah. And they hang on existing poles like the Pirates. Uh, yeah, I mean, those will be banners. the size that they need to be for those particular standards. I think those will actually be a little smaller, but the ones that are going up on the sides of buildings um, would be the three by three signs. There may be smaller signs also that it'll just be put in people's windows, storefronts. And I understand there's a grant that's paying for this. Um, a musician may want to come yeah, forward and well, speak to uh, that. Grant paying for it and uh, uh, the city public works, there is a contract to that to, to install them. Um, there's a process to install them, but I don't know about in terms <coughs> of the payment of who's. Who, who puts up the pirates ones now and uh, all the others we have. Public work, so you would you'd be tasked with this job to put them up and take them down. And how long would they be up there versus whatever? Else? They, they they haven't been through the approval process with public works yet, but that'll be determined as part of that process. Okay. Activities. Well, so. What are the, are the, is there an ask for how long they will be up? It says activities occurring October 21 through May 22. Yeah. For a year. October 21 through May 22. Six months. Six months. Are there any other questions? Any other discussion? Do you need we a motion? Have a, we have a, do we have a motion? We have, we have a motion, motion we have a second. Second. Well, we already have one. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Motion by uh, Councilman Roth, uh, second by Councilwoman Barnaby. We'll call for the vote starting in Ward 3. Yes. Ward 4. Yes. Ward 5. Yes. Ward two. I'm sorry, Ward one. Yes. <laughs> and Ward two votes yes. Okay. I'm very sorry about that confusion. I am in Ward two. Uh, <laughs> I, I had one other item. Okay. For council comments. Council thank, comments, thank Mr. Roth. Um, yes. Um, so, anyway, to, to going back to the beginning of the meeting, I um, uh, just wanted the administrator. So, when, when I talked about um, that I wanted an update on the park, I also want the uh, consultant to come in. I want to talk to the consultant because they, they, it's been a while since we've seen them. Um, and then also I want, the, uh, I want to see where, where phases we are and what it takes to get this thing going. We have, uh, you know, we have funds, we have the project. This project is uh, a half, you know, well over half a decade old and uh, we, need to, we need to crank it up. Thank you, Mr. Roth. Uh, Mr. McClellan, Mayor. Just to give you um, a quick status on the design, I requested the schedule from the co consultant last week, and they indicated to me that they expect to have the CAD file for uh, the rest of the survey within 30 days, and that's taking it all the way to the hospital. Okay. okay? Um, 
then that would take uh, 30 to 45 days from receipt of the survey file to get to 60% plans for, for the rest of the phases. Um, and then uh, they would submit those 60% plans to the city for site improvement plan review. And then we would review it. That would probably take at least a couple of weeks. And then the final plans after they received those reviews would be another 30 to 45 days out. So we're probably somewhere between four to six months in getting the final design for the rest of the phases, okay. just to give you an update. But Mr. Mayor, Councilor Rock, you know, when, I, when I've approached these kinds of longer term projects in the past and, and you're dealing with contractors and, and the contingencies that can occur, mm -hmm. I like to have a regular kind of executive meeting with them and, and say, you come in and keep us up to speed, let our people that are related to it be in the meeting, tell you how we're getting along uh, how we're how we're solving issues that come up and the like and and I think we probably need to engage Kimberly and, and our, our folks over there mm -hmm. a little bit closer because it's a major undertaking that's probably the next quality of life project the largest one in the community at this time along with other important things but but I don't like the grass growing under people's feet I agree and we've done that through workshops and, and we I'm can sure. do that's probably the better way to to do this is have them come in at a workshop that's, that's and explain it to yeah. us uh, yeah. where we are. I, so. I agree with everything you just said. Yep. Mr. Sanders, you had a question? Or, I mean, hold on, Mr. Roth, are I'm, you I'm done? done? Okay, yeah. Mr. Sanders, your council report questions? Uh, when we approved the um, general contractor for this, it, they were to bring back us all subcontractors or at least inform us of that. I haven't received anything on any subcontractors for anything in that project. And uh, in my interview with the, the, the general contractor to do this for us, there was a, uh, I took the position and I understood it that we would have no uh, separation, especially with the initial grading or infrastructure underground, like, you know, cameras or, or cabling or water, sewer, that they, we would just do one project in succinct with the other. Now, and I understand design, but I, I never understood that we were going to wait until we had that because, and that was months ago, and now you're talking about another four months, and, and we've been doing this for years, and I just don't see, I don't see what it takes to, I mean, we haven't done the survey markers, for, for the section and there's just a lot of things that we haven't done that should be in process right now there's docks that 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 a couple of them that looks to me like needs to be torn out uh or that private individuals and, and who has riparian rights i know i discussed that with you that it, we we need to be contacting them and saying you know you know how does that affect us i don't think we've done our our legwork on on prepping this uh, duly, duly noted, uh, I'm just, the, the contract was issued the way it was as a first phase with the idea that the design would be, the design is continuing on the, on the next phase as we speak, so it will be done before they're in a position to be finished with the first phase of the project so that it would just continue seamlessly. Not that one would end completely before you start the next one, um, but that's just the way it was set up. Um, if we need to change that, let me know. We need to change that. Okay. I, I agree with you, Mr. Sanders, from the first part of your comments about we thought it was going to be boom, rolling, and it would take about a year and a half, if I remember correctly, <coughs> to be start to finish of everything. Right. That's So I do remember discussing that um, going through. Obviously, I, you know, I would like to see the timeline, too, as far as maybe in the work, we'll get a workshop yeah. scheduled pretty quick, maybe have Kimley Horn come in, give us the explanation. We can talk about some other connectivity things that, that haven't stopped but have worked through, and then the council will have to decide on some of those options that are out there um, because, again, I know that not everything um, is, is easy to get. If we, if we had a perfect world, we'd be along the whole riverfront. That's okay. just not the perfect world we're in. Generally on projects, whether it be construction, whether it be uh, IT or, or public works, in any phase, you have a project 
manager or somebody's assigned to that, I assume that's you from the city. Mm -hmm. And then we have a project software sometimes that, that we can present to, to show you the stages it is in and why that why we're moving from stage to stage to stage to stage so that the project stays in focus. And I, we're not doing that. I will be happy to prepare something. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get Mr. McClellan. That, that, that's exactly how it's done, is the Gantt chart and, and trying to do simultaneous things at the same time and resolve issues and the like. You know, where we're at right now is, is obviously in design and I'm sure the initial A&E, you know, has, has, has kind of gone through so at least we can get to construction drawings because that's what we're looking at. And then after that, you know, the, the uh, general contractor can figure out the subs and give us more specifics on that Gantt chart progress management timeline. But that's really how this project should be managed from us as the, 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 the purchaser of it the, 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 and everything. I think we may have been a little bit over-reliant on some other folks. Agreed. Yep. Thank you. And nothing else, Mr. Sanders? That's okay. it. Okay. Mrs. Coachman? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if many of you know of a radio personality uh, by the name of Tom uh, Jorner. He always came on radio and he would say he was the hardest working man on radio. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I can say that, maybe not about radio, but for Jim McClellan um, and, and all of our public works and directors and public safety people. Just, wow, you keep us going. Um, speaking of keeping us going, uh, flooding, I've been getting a lot of comments about, you know, and complaints about flooding from um, the community. Obviously, we've been having a lot of rain. You know, I guess be careful what you wish for. It's better than having a drought and having brush fires all over the place. Um, but that's just a steady thing. Um, and I had the opportunity to speak to the NAACP during a virtual meeting, and it was an opportunity to give them updates on what was going on. And one of the things that they um, made comment about a lot, and we hear it a lot from uh, different um, repeat attendees, um, Mr. Wooten, Mr. Javelina, about communication. And there's, there's nothing wrong with the way we communicate. We're doing what's legal and what's the basic. But I, I feel maybe we should be interested in also expanding and doing even a little bit above and beyond. And I know staff is probably like, no. But maybe we might want to look into social media or some other ways how to communicate with the community and keep them abreast of what's going on. I've done Zoom side chats and they've not always been well attended while they were live, mm -hmm. but they do tend to go back and view it. So I'm not saying we have to do that, but I, I think if we could beef up the way we communicate to each other and <laughs> mainly the community, it would be pretty beneficial. And that's it. All right, thank you. And um, from my standpoint, I think that's you know obviously a good process to maybe look at and obviously a lot of factors play into it logistics the technology the cost and but anything we can do to get more information out to our consumer which is our taxpayer is important so well, maybe the police department does a good job at that with their their facebook excellent job yeah. and uh, i don't think they get you know the worry is that is you get in a political debate or something but this is just information right no only. I, I agree with that and i think it's actually yeah. assisted them in solving some crime and but it's very informative they you know I, I read I see that almost daily that you know this road's closed and you know beware of this and lock your cars at night and so and so it's it's, it's an informative way to communicate with your citizens and I'm, I appreciate it and yeah. our public works updates our right. weekly updates I haven't in the past to kind of like capture the picture and yes put it on I've, I've done the same things. just like the, the the recycling and the and the yard waste because those are big big issues right now and I'm trying to copy and paste and put it on there and say this is what I know <coughs> but maybe we should be doing that the police department doesn't have to do everything you know that but uh, that that's good information that spreads real quick mr. Perry and I discussed this two days ago 
on what we can do with, through our PIO office with the police department and going through things. So it is something that, and again, I've said this, I could give him a million things to do every day, but he's got to get through the first six weeks of what we got to do with budget right now. And I think you're going to, we're going to all be happy as he gets his feet wet even more. So we appreciate that. Um, one thing that, and again, I know it's budget time and our staff is doing a great job in um, working through that with the changes and everybody that's in this room, thank you very much. And everybody that will watch or hear this later, thank you, because there's a lot of challenges out there. And again, with, with COVID spiking back up, we're hoping that that will, I've, I've heard, I don't know, you know, you hear different things, but it's gonna spike a little bit now and then hopefully start to go down and then we'll kind of see from that. So please be careful. Please, uh, you know, again, it's your choice, but with the uh, Pfizer coming out now that's FDA approved, if you feel the need, please get the shots. Um, and then obviously school, you know, is, is in full swing, as you know, Ms. Coachman knows, or what the rest of us driving around. Mm -hmm. Please drive safe, drive slow. And the Bradenton Police Department has been out at school sites and trying to slow people down. So we appreciate that. And, and again, it's not, that, it's not about the punishments, it's about the safety of the students in the area. So please, please be cognizant of that, even though we, the last year and a half has been a little bit different with school. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're back and, and yes, Mrs. Barnaby, go Canes on Friday night. So um, that's all I have. Department heads, start with Mrs. Melton. I just wanted to confirm there will not be a workshop on September 1st. No. Okay, thank you. All right, um, that's what I didn't plan on. We didn't talk about it, but I don't think we had planned on it, so. All right, um, Mr. Rudisell? I don't have anything, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. McClellan? Just in response to the gentleman who spoke this morning in regards to the, the, the lighting coming off of the Shoreview apartment, my recommendation would be that we hire somebody separately to measure it so that there's no perceived bias in terms of measuring, getting the measurements and go from there. Um, we can get in touch with a, an electrical or a lighting contractor that has the capability to do that for us um, and present that information because I think otherwise it's, it's gonna be a biased question. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, that's fine uh, on that note. Um, I had a, a citizen um, contact me about a uh, apartment, or uh, it's a uh, uh, an office condominium complex that just changed hands. That they have a light that uh, this she did not. This person did not want to call code enforcement because of the new anon no anonymous code enforcement asked me to look into it. I think there may be a lighting issue to where they might need to uh, certain brightness and also directional. So if, you, if you're gonna do that, I have an address for you to add to that list. Okay, that's fine. No, I, I appreciate that. And one of the things that, you know, again, not to perceived, your perceived perception is different <coughs> than my perceived perception. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, Robin's been involved in it, or Mrs. Singer's been involved in it very much. And, and I just want you two to know that you've done what you can, and that may be the best way to, right. to get the next step because it's not because of who it is, they're getting a special privilege. You know, if there was something they, and they got held up on that project because of us. So it wasn't that, you know, and they didn't get any special, they had to get it. We went out, checked it, and it was there. And, and I know, like I said, I didn't get any more emails over the last month or two. And I know Mr. Sanders was involved in that, but um, I don't think we have. I haven't seen any. Yeah, I, I have. I've you have, but they haven't forwarded them to me. And, you know, because again, I try to answer them, but it comes to the point where it's hard to answer something that, that just keeps going down that rabbit hole that isn't true that we know. Now, if we've made a mistake, we'll correct it, but otherwise, that's probably the best angle to go. Um, and like I said, obviously, you know, nobody wants the street closed. That's, you're working through that, and the rain has been a nightmare at times. Um, well, again, uh, uh, an un unexpected utility was, was found that created the need for the conflict box. And that's, that's what slowed it down. So it, it's unfortunate. And at this point, like you had talked to them, it's, you know, we hope to have it by next week to be opened back up. Um, we didn't know that uh, that sewer line was there. Yeah. Uh, we knew it was there. It just didn't show up in, the, in their plan. Oh. Um, 
So don't we do locates before we? The contractor's responsible for doing the locates. Uh, I, it's hard to believe it's, it was a surprise, but. If, again, the things get missed. It's unfortunate. All right. Anything else, Jim? Um, and as you noticed, uh, we're in the process of putting out a press release that we will be extending the by the alternate week. Um, we've had one new. Uh, we put paperwork in today for one additional driver to be hired, um, and we continue to scour, hoping to get some others. We we also were able to with the council's actions and and some other work internally keep one person who was ready to leave stay on board yeah. so um it's an it's an ongoing process so thank everybody for this weekend's um situation that we went through and i know those those people worked a lot extra to get that pipe yeah. closed up so and we are now in the process of evaluating our um, hydraulic computer model of our water system to determine if there's a way that we can eliminate that pipe altogether so that we don't have to worry about these particular problems on that that pipe because it's uh, it's an older pipe but it's made of uh, asbestos cement which was um, it was a standard material used for water mains back in the 1950s and 60s um, and it's perfectly safe you know the word asbestos but uh, it's perfectly safe from a water standpoint but it's it's not it's not the best material for longevity, and so we're looking to avoid um, to be able to abandon it in place and, and bypass it altogether. So, and some of those things could be helped by uh, lobbyists to move us forward. Some of those more money, more money. Yes, yes, sir. I have a Thank question. You. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I had a, um, a request from someone in my ward that. Um, she says she's signed up for the red alert, but she's having. She says she doesn't feel like she knows what's going on, as far as with the recycling, and they don't, they haven't figured it out. Is it on a website as well? And is it where where can I direct them? Um, it's it's on the front page of the website. Okay. Uh, the, the, on okay. down on the lower left hand side, there's a notice of uh, changes to the solid waste schedule. Okay. It's a link for them to click on. So. Okay. And and. One of the things, I don't know if, if you folks got the emails that I started getting about, we were getting um, code red burnout. Right. You know, people yeah. started saying that, hey, this isn't a code red, where that's, it right. should be more of an emergency. But right. so here we are trying to get information to people, and some people, well, I live in a condo, it, that garbage doesn't bother me because it's different. It's like sometimes you have to take some <laughs> of the other things with it, and, I, you know. Well, I don't think we can over-inform people. Well, I can appreciate well, where they're coming from. Thought. I kind of slightly beg to differ because, for instance, we had one individual who, who, who called <laughs> with a question about what their day was, and they, and you know, we informed them that we had, I call it the garbage flu. Uh, last Monday, six drivers called out sick. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't COVID; it was just garbage flu. Monday. Um, and so we weren't able to pick up yard waste that day. So I told the individual, you know, you are correct. You, you looked at the schedule. You were supposed to put yours out. <coughs> we're a day behind. We'll get you on Tuesday. And if you haven't signed up for Code Red, please sign up. And he's like, well, I have signed up for Code Red. And could we get this kind of information as well? To do a day-to-day -day Code Red, that, that, uh, first off, we don't know until yeah. 7 o'clock yeah. the cards were dealt with in terms of how many people day to day. That would, by that point, people have already put their materials out. So it, that doesn't apply, so. That's why we maybe need another medium, like a social medium, to, to get that information out. Absolutely. Because to me, Code Red says emergency. Mm -hmm. It's been used frequently mm -hmm. for hurricanes. So if you, everything becomes a Code Red, you're gonna, people are saying, that's like, you know. Discontinue. Yeah, just say, look, I, you know, everything you guys do is code red. Maybe it's just what it's named. Maybe we should just call it Braindom 411 yeah, or something. Could be, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Jim. Ms. Singer? Um, we have a number of petitions that are on their way to you uh, in September. 
Um, and some of them were originally slated for September 8th, but we're going to be having some budget presentations that day. So we're going to push some of those. We're checking with the petitioners, and we're going to push some of those to the 22nd. I'll send you an email, let you know, because some of them are controversial and people have questions about <coughs> it. Uh, so you may be hearing from some of your constituents. And so we'll let you know probably Friday or Monday um, what the status is on those, just to keep you informed. Okay. Thank you. Chief Edwards? Mm -hmm. oh. Chief, oh, I'm sorry. Just Chief Edwards? Chief. Barnaby has a question. No rest for the wicked. Mm -hmm. Or weary, I'm rest sorry. Wicked. No. Wicked. wicked. <laughs> well, that's, my grandmother always said no rest for the wicked, but I guess I should say no rest for the weary because I don't believe our fire chief is wicked. Oh, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the major fire that happened and we had departments responding from everywhere and we responded as well and I was happy to read that it, it wasn't any of our firefighters that had the... Right. That was a fire out on 14th Street um, Friday. Um, it was a Cedar Hammock call, one of theirs and they've called mutual aid. I think they went to about a three alarm fire those are difficult fires when they get into these storage units. Um, first of all, you don't know what they've got in them. You don't know what you're going to find. And this was an older unit. And once you get inside these things, they're like a, you know, a rat maze going through them. And just to get into them, pull the material out, blocks your egress. And guys really have a, a, a tough time with those things. But um, yeah, they, they called out a lot of guys and a lot of folks. And um, they were out there quite a while. It was just one of those things. They're hard to reach, hard to get to. I think they finally cut uh, holes in the roof, and, and you had to use a master stream of uh, aerial to to go from the top down. But it took a long time, and it was hot. I mean, these guys were dropping. Um, I know they, they had sent a few to the hospital, none of our guys. Um, they do a real good job with the rehab and everything. But it's when you're dealing with that kind of heat, just standing there in the sun with bunker gear on will ruin you <laughs> I mean it'll drop you but guys did a real good job it was it's it's tough but um, yeah they did, did a great job thank you yeah. I I mean when I I was out of town this weekend and when I pulled up the news and started reading things I was like yeah but because I hadn't gotten the call I, I knew it wasn't any of our guys but uh, they came from Sarasota they had a um, um, engine strike team called in from Sarasota too so it, wow it got well, busy. thank you and please thank our gentlemen and ladies for everything that they've done I'll do it. I just wanted to let you know there were nine people on the roof over at the new station yeah. till almost seven o'clock the other night putting that roof on so I was they're, out there. they're starting to move a little bit I was out there on Thursday and <laughs> the parking lot was full they were up on the roof putting that up working on the inside getting their plumbing done and everything so it's coming along. I mean, something all of a sudden, I think Jim motivated them and uh, got them going. <laughs> it looks good. Thank you, Chief. Chief Bevan? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, to your comments, Mr. Sanders, thank you foremost. Um, and I want to make sure you all know, because we're all kind of in that same age group where Facebook is, is kind of our medium. But we actually um, access five different social media venues, and we do that for a variety of reasons because we want to hit different demographics within the city. I actually had the opportunity just a couple of weeks ago to uh, present to uh, mainly EMS fire, but also some city managers uh, because we've been identified here at the police department with our success with social media and, and getting the word out and getting our message out, which I think in this day and age um, our messaging is very important and getting in front of things before they happen and so um, all kinds of opportunities and and we have really learned a lot along the way um, you would be surprised to hear that there's and, and if you pay very close attention to our different ways that we put out messaging we follow it there's specific times when you might want to tweet to get double the exposure there's times when you want to put something out on Facebook um, you know, because you know when they're off work or when they're home doing it. So um, thank you, and, and we're always happy to assist where we can um, with the city. Um, I just wanted to thank you for approving our forfeiture grant request. There will be more on that in a few weeks. I think we were going to do it September 8th, but you just reminded me. I think we're going to put that off because we probably have a, a long day. Um, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the, with the groups when they show up. 
But this is something we do every year, as you know. We um, advertise the ability for groups within our community to put in for funding for various um, initiatives. We did the same this year. We got um, even more than we've ever had in years past. Because of what we took in last year in our state forfeiture funding, we were required to give away $9,000. I've made a commitment to you all in years past, and I continued it with this year, um, that we're going to give away all we can. So we doubled that amount. This year's um, contributions from that uh, fund is going to be $18,000. And that's on top of the $7,000 we have given away throughout the year for various groups and entities who have come to us asking for smaller amounts, which is very, very frequent, and that you all approve monthly with those community funds. And so I, I truly appreciate that, and it's going to be a, a great event. You know, as you know, we invite them all here, um, and they're always happy to, to get money from us, and we're always happy to give it, so thank you. And then just finally, you know, my, my rule is I always try to bring you something positive, because um, we all hear a lot of negative out there. I was just going to mention to you that my, um, one of um, my, my folks, um, manager Valerie Knight, is going to be recognized next Thursday, Thursday by um, Vern Buchanan in his award ceremony for a career service award. We're quite proud of her for that. A lot of it was due to her stand-up efforts of our civilian advisory committee, which has really been a great success. I know you were there. Um, they, they really, um, we're really getting a lot from them and vice versa. However, um, the mayor called me yesterday, and I, I got a whole new uh, great story, and he didn't really tell me much, but I'm going to embellish it um, because I think I can. Um, let me know that while he was driving um, the right way on Manatee Avenue and stopped for a traffic light, uh, in front of him they see a large truck coming the opposite direction, going the wrong way on a road. Just so happens that one of my officers, whew, thank goodness, in a brand brand new car just had it got it three weeks ago <laughs> as soon as he starts talking I was like oh no she didn't wreck the car did she um, <laughs> sees what's happening takes her cruiser and puts it in between the oncoming the oncoming truck and the traffic that was stopped for the light um, I don't know how truly perilous it was but it certainly wasn't without danger um, and and certainly danger to my officer and to my brand new car um, <laughs> They were, they were both all right at the end. The driver was a little confused. He, he was cited, but nobody injured, nobody harmed. Um, but I think that that's just a testament to what my folks are willing to do day in and day out, because you don't know what that driver's going to do. And, and we've seen in the news, I think you all have seen, just this year alone, we've lost two officers in this region to um, wrong way drivers mm -hmm. and them putting their, their cruisers to, to block it. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's um, where Manatee Avenue splits. Uh, Go ahead. No, he had turned off of one of the side streets and turned right going into traffic. And he was, at the speed he was going at the time, I was watching it and I wasn't sure that he was going to stop or hit me head on. And all of a sudden, her car came out of nowhere and got in front of him and then he still didn't stop right away. And she got out of the car and then he, I, it seemed there was some confusion and it wasn't where, oh, you know, there's been a time or two we all turn the wrong way and you go, oh, yeah. and you back up and go. Right. This person wasn't stopping. So and it may have been, I don't know what reason, but it was kind of weird. The reason I say that, that happens a lot. Oh, yeah, from, straight. From First Street mm -hmm. to whatever it is, uh, where it splits, there's always a, people gets confused. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not, maybe the markings are not well. I don't know. if They're not from around I, here. They're not from around here, whatever. There, there's, there's, I've gotten, you know, people to me multiple, multiple times. What the mayor doesn't realize is that we, we follow him to keep him safe say, during the course of his day. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we all saw it coming. We, we got on the radio and there. I know, I'm under investigation. The motorcade. And uh, perhaps the rest of you too, but no. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, uh, One more thing. Would you tell uh, the council what I heard you say to the advisory board about your um, police force that it, and, and I don't want it. Uh, I don't want to give it away, but how you are, how can I say it without saying it, um, how your retention or your, your, where do you stand with your police force in, in your career of 30 years? So I, um, I gave the Citizen Advisory Committee kind of a um, year and a half review, and one of the things I mentioned 
Um, although we are, as I'm sure, I think I think it was in the Herald today, we are kind of significantly impacted right now um, with um, with COVID. And um, your prayers, please, for one of my officers who was just admitted today and who's in pretty serious condition um, with COVID. However, um, we are standing fast. And uh, the last time I got to tell you this, it only lasted for two days. So far, I'm at about um, two weeks. We're standing fast right now on um, full staffing. I've got uh, 123 officer positions available, and I have 123 officers filling them, and um, only two in training. And so I, I don't even have a lot, you know, just coming into the pipeline. My field training officers did a fantastic job getting them out there. And so that doesn't happen very frequently. Um, we've, we've gotten a lot of interest up north. Uh, with our agency, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. And um, yeah, yeah, I think I mentioned, I said, I've, I've been a cop uh, 34 years, and I can count on one hand how many times that we have actually been able to achieve full staffing. And so um, I hope I'm not cursing it by saying it twice now in the same week, but um, it's a good thing, and we can, hope we can keep that trend, and we hope we can retain them as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Perry? Just briefly, Mayor, um, some of the directors alluded to it, budget season. Um, I've had the opportunity to kind of get with some of the folks that have been around for a long time and asked about how budgets go and what you all are used to and what I should do for the budget presentation and the like. And so um, we plan on having the budget, uh, the proposed budget to you all around September 3rd. It's right before the, the, the weekend, basically the, the holiday weekend. And uh, then our first uh, presentation to you will be on September 8th. The public meetings that are necessary by law are scheduled on the 9th and the 21st. I went back and looked at the minutes from prior, and, and I understand that's a fairly, a fairly um, a quick process at those public meetings. But I, I, I guess what concerned me or, or caught my attention was that there wasn't much presentation on the budget in that initial budget proposal. And I'm going to try to drill down on that a little bit and provide you some substantive information on what I think this budget is for the next year, maybe a little bit more into the future, how it kind of sets the foundation for that, um, looks at the substantive issues regarding the revenue picture, how much more money, where the money comes from, things like that. Um, maybe some projections on, on the reliability of the money, things like that, and then move into the expenses as well uh, and where we have the proposed increase, decreases in program expenditures and the like. I imagine my presentation, which will be PowerPoint. You hadn't probably seen that before. There'll be a lot of numbers and things like that. And my presentation, I would typically do that with our city budget director to the overall full council takes probably about 45 minutes. In this case, a little bit smaller version, about a half hour probably. I want to engage my directors then to come up department by department, division by division, probably with limitations on that. So you can expect probably somewhere on the order of seven, eight people to come before you. I ask them to try to be brief, but to be concise and, and, and have important um, data for you five to seven minutes each and obviously stand for questions about the budget some of the stuff you'll like some of it you might not that's the process I'm not trying to bring the food and say you know eat it all uh, and and I think that that's a good give and take process for the overall submission of a budget proposal and approval of a final budget and some people have been working everybody's been working really hard particularly over in Tom's shop. And, you know, I, I, I basically said a couple of times, um, who's the budget department? Well, Corey, Linda, probably Tamara, and myself. That's the budget department. And, and it's kind of strange because it, it's bringing together different resources from different people that really aren't budget people per se. That's not what they do all the time. I'm kind of, you know, I, I do do a lot of budget work. But, but, but I hope to improve the process, bottom line. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thank you. That makes me happy. All right. Any other questions? I have one more question for Miss um, uh, Singer. Um, and while the <coughs> council is convened here, 
where are we at or what are you proposing? I, I know what I've proposed for the comprehensive plan. Um, we are, first of all, you have two amendments that are going to be coming before you, and then we're going to come back to you um, with a third um, repeal and replace, or basically just the comp plan as it currently sits. Um, and that's uh, so that we can send it up to Municode and get it out there for everybody to see. Then in the future, I think um, what we're looking at is some uh, a, a report card for the form-based code, codifying that along with the other changes. And then you may want to double back with a visioning process, uh, which may entail further changes to the comprehensive plan. But when we bring you, probably in the next couple of months, the plan as it currently sits, I'll go through that with you and we can discuss what possible changes or visioning projects you may want to go through. Uh, in, in anticipating changes to the comp plan. Will we be able to put that together in one uh, area so that, we, you know, uh, you know, right now if you Google comprehensive plan or whatever, yeah. you go back to 2010. Right, right. Which is old news. Yeah. And no, we, we, we are planning on sending like the, the current version of the comprehensive plan to Muni code so they can publish it just like the land use regulations are published and the rest of the code Combined is with all the uh, uh, upgrades and so forth yes. over the 10 year period so yes. that they can get a full picture at one place. Yes. Right now you can't. Right. And, and that's, it's, and, and, and then you're saying a couple of months down the road, we may want to revisit some of that yeah, older you can, stuff. And you can amend your comprehensive plan at any time. Right. There, there's no longer a restriction on the number of times that you can do that per year. Um, so it, there's a process to do it through the state, but you, you still, you can do it at any time. So we can go through a visioning process, you can decide what changes you have to make or want to make, uh, keeping in mind that there is a minimum requirement in the Florida statutes of what you have to have in your comprehensive plan. So and we can't we're just wipe that. it out and start from scratch. We, we do have to comply with state statutes. Right, but that's just basically what we've been doing over the years. Is yeah, just, meeting just that, amending that, it as necessary. Amending it as necessary, and, that, that, and now it's made it real confusing to kind of, at least for me, to, to, to see what the whole picture is. Right, right. Okay. We'll fix all that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then the, the final note, um, I know that there's going to be a conference that several council people will be at at the end of October. Right. We have a meeting on October 27th <laughs> scheduled. Right. Um, if there's, at the pleasure of the council, if we could maybe move that till November 3rd. And uh, obviously it's a lot of notice, so I don't know, Ms. Singer, if you'd have any concerns about that, or I know more people have date-specific things with you, but is, is this enough time to give them to say we're going to have a meeting on <coughs> October 13th as well as then not the 27th but November 3rd. So is there any issues with doing that? That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, You're looking October 27th. That's the FRA conference. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be here on November 3rd. I'm, I'm just one person. But okay. I think that we wouldn't have three on the 27th, so we wouldn't have a quorum. No, we did 27th uh, is completely out, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, All right, if it, I, I guess we can just direct Mr. Perry to make those okay. changes to whatever needs to be changed, if there's any, other than just the date. Yes, sir. All right. So don't put anything controversial on them. <laughs> Hearing uh, anything else for the good of the city? Please record that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Anyone else in the? Oh, wait a minute. I do have one thing. Oh, okay. Ms. I Coker. think this is the last time we're together before Labor Day, and, you know, there's a big football game coming. I know you guys are talking about Manatee, but go Knowles. <laughs> Mr. Perry has no comment. No comment. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to comment right. Right. I, other than to say that, that Mr. Perry and I have a friendly wager on the game. Ooh. Oranges? Go and touch down Jesus. So. <laughs> All right. Hearing nothing further, we'll be adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>